Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Southern Outdoorsman Podcast. We've got a fun one for you today. I think this is going to be our last turkey episode. Uh, turkey season will have ended yesterday by the time that this drops, and we got a lot to talk about. Uh, as we talked about in the last Thursday episode, Jacob tagged out, and so he played guide a little bit for, uh, for his brother Thomas, and it, it went pretty well. It went pretty well. I killed another bird, too, so we're going to talk about that. Uh, but Jacob, how are you doing? Uh, doing well. Feeling like a million bucks. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Thomas, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing really well. My favorite, uh, my favorite thing from this past week. So anyways, like Thomas, you tagged out. Just to, just to get to the chase, Thomas tagged out with Jacob guiding him. And when you killed the last bird, Lyle Gilbert of Houndstooth Game Calls texted us, and he was like, one thing's for sure, you're not going to be able to tell Jacob a dang thing after this season. <laughs> I was yeah. like, accurate, yeah, accurate. So anyways, um, how do we want to get into this? I mean, you guys, uh, Thomas, you were really slacking this year, not really trying at all. Uh, it, was, it was pretty disappointing, honestly, from our perspective. Let me get a little... Jacob, was, no, 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 I, Jacob was ready to disown you. Yeah, yeah. listen, so uh, I guess... Thomas was, is like, I don't want to go. I, 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 I got to say this at the beginning of the podcast. So I've been asking Thomas for three weeks to come to Turkey Hunt. Uh -huh. And he's like, nah, dude, I got to play golf this weekend. I got to get ready for this wedding, blah, 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 blah. Excuses for days. <laughs> and so I was like, well, he's not going to hunt this last week. I tagged out, you know, had like another 10 days left of season. And so I just started, I, I had listeners that were like struggling. I'm like, dude, I'll take you hunting. You know, I, there was one, uh, Josh, you know who you are. Thought I was going to take him hunting, try to get him his first bird. And then all of a sudden, Tom was like, well, we can, we can go this Saturday. I was waiting for him to tag out. D I had been ta <laughs> Dude. That's now, what I was doing. You were waiting for him to figure him out. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I, I wait till the end of the season just uh, to finish so, it up. So anyways, Thomas oh is God. like, man, I don't want to go. And he's like, oh, but I can go this Saturday. I'm like, you can go this Saturday? I'm like, okay. So I went out and started listening. You know, found a couple spots, found some birds, okay? And actually ended up finding five birds to drop pins on the day before on Friday. I'm like, mm -hmm. we've got two areas, there's five birds, three in one spot, two in another spot. We'll go hunt them. And we're going to tell some stories, but he ends up killing a bird on this very first time going out. Okay. Yep. Crazy hunt. And then after that, it was just a slippery slope to the bottom of like, we got to go hunt again. We got to go hunt again. Can you hunt during the week? Can we go again? <laughs> Let's go. And it's like, it went from like him not really caring. And he hunted with me in Arkansas. We had some exciting hunts in Arkansas last year and to literally not caring to like, Oh, let's go get another bird. Let's go get another bird. Oh crap. We got three. Let's go try to tag out. You know, mm -hmm. I had two hours of hunting. Yeah. Try to make it happen. So, Thomas, what was, what was your thought going so, into the season? Because you hunted harder in deer season. Why, yeah. why were you slacking so hard? So, <laughs> asking the tough questions. So, as far as turkey hunting goes, I've been turkey hunting in the past, but not at the um, volume of how I deer hunt, okay. I would say. So, like last year in Arkansas, that was probably the most times I ever turkey hunted in my life. Yep. Um, and then leading up to this year, it was kind of like brushed off, kind of. Mm. I mean, I'm getting married in three weeks. So I, all I hear is excuses. That, that's I, a lot. I killed a deer hey. like three days before I got married. But that's not that. That was not an excuse. It was more like I was like focused on other yeah, stuff. I, don't know. I was focused on other stuff. Okay. Okay. Well, um, that sounds like an excuse. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what else you call that. Yeah. But once, but once we went that Saturday, like Anthony the wedding said, can wait. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it'll wait. We're gonna go do our thing. Okay, yeah. I'm not gonna get you in trouble. Probably shouldn't say that. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> real quick, put your put your other phone on uh, vibrate. Real quick. So. Again, it it went down a, a slippery slope, and we ended up, and we're gonna talk about this. So, from Thomas hunted with me five times, and he killed four birds, and this gives me even more confidence for late season hunting in Alabama. I'll be a hundred percent honest, because from the time I and we were talking about, I was telling you Thomas some stats, told Andrew this too. From when I finally killed my first bird after missing those two, to the time I tagged out, it was five hunts, five hunts, four birds. For you, we hunted. Real, you almost couldn't even count the that one time we didn't kill as a hunt. We were going out listening, but like we got like an hour and a half to go. We went to a new area. I hadn't hadn't been to this year other than like right before opening day. You'd see yeah. Jake and everybody know there's gobblers in there. Yeah, no birds gobble that morning. It was just one of those you know real just miserable high humidity, just nasty days. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you killed. Oh, that was the morning I killed, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was your morning. Okay. Field. it was nasty that. Yeah, day. when yeah. I walked outside, it was like sticky. It was like seven. It was like seventy something degrees at at seven a.m. or at four a.m. <clears throat> yeah, or, that that morning sucked. Yeah, except I killed a bird. Yeah, yeah, yeah you you made it happen. We did not. Well, again, I should we should just went to a different spot. But Thomas was like, man, I can only hunt till like eight thirty. Then we got a, I got a call. I'm like, okay, well, that's fine. Yeah, you know, we'll mm -hmm. we'll make it happen. But uh, let's go into the the first hunt, Thomas, because the first hunt was intense. All all these were intense. The first hunt. The first one was not intense until it got intense. I'll the, say that. Well, it's because you were looking at 
Well, let's, 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 let's go into it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I find five birds on Friday. Mm-hmm. Try to roost three of them on Friday night. Found them that morning. Go back out. Had to drive all the way back out. Try to go find them Friday night. Ended up nothing was gobbled on the roost that night. At least nothing I could hear. We go out Saturday morning, and you were going to go. We, I was going to park at one gate, if I remember correctly, and you were going to go. No, no, that's a different bird. God, we're all getting all confused. So we end up parking at this gate, or I met you. We parked at this gate, and we walked in. Nice little walk going to the spot. Mm-hmm. I was pretty confident, except for a couple things. Probably the one thing that makes me, especially this season, not confident going in the woods, at least hearing birds and getting on birds, is high winds. Oh, yeah. And it was one of those mornings. It was just, I mean, we got out there, wind was ripping, and I'm like, well, we're going to get in position to see what happens. And, you know, kind of get at the base of this drainage, kind of below where I think these birds were roosted at. They were kind of up this little, this little, I say little, really not that little, mm-hmm. this uh, secondary tributary drainage that went up on this ridge. They were roosted up there. It seemed like when they flew down, they went down low and started like kind of working down towards a, a creek bottom. So I'm like, we're just going to beat them down there. We're going to be down there on those little points and just listen for them. And I mean, daylight happened. It was like nothing. Yeah. I felt like it was Michael Pike all over again. Cause I took Michael Pike maybe a couple days before that. And we heard birds on the roost, but after that it was just nothing like absolutely nothing. Uh, and we, Ended up hunting around there, did some loops in there, ended up never hearing a bird. And I think we hunted in there until like 9 o'clock. We ended up cutting some gobbler tracks that were pretty fresh yep. down this bottom. Time out. What was your perspective walking around in the wind and not hearing anything, and it was just kind of slow? Well, I was wondering why Jacob t- took me to that one, that spot. Well, because in that, when we went down there, it looked good. The area, you know, you have a big creek that goes through it. You got the, um, you know, the terrain features – from what I've learned in the past couple of years, turkey hunting sits up sets up well for turkey hunting. And you know, he did say he heard three birds in there the morning before. But I will say that when when we were walking in, I was like, we we're not going to be able to hear anything. Yeah. Um, but then, like we said before, we even set up in the dark. There were gobbler tracks on this logging road that was probably fifty yards, seventy five yards from where we set up on. Yeah, close to. Um, yeah. But I will say, like, leading up, once it got daylight, an hour after daylight, once we got up and started moving, I did not feel confident, to be honest with you, in that spot. And not that I was out there previously during the year hunting, but, yeah. And and you've, you've never killed a turkey at no. this point? No, never killed a turkey. Okay. All right, so what was the thought process with the second spot? So we ended up bouncing. It was 9.30. I was like, dude, let's go. Or 9 o'clock. I'm like, let's leave here. Let's go to the other spot where I heard the other two birds. They gobbled. I left on Friday, day before, I left the birds, these three birds, before they hit the ground. Um, and I went to this other spot uh, after uh, after fly down. And these there was two other gobblers down to another little creek drainage that were just gobbling their brains out on the ground. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, we'll go over there. I have a pretty good idea. There's this one drainage that comes off the creek, pretty big drainage that uh, comes up on top of this big ridge. I guarantee it's like one of the bigger drainages on that creek system. They're probably going to be in that drainage. If I guess with the high winds, they're probably scratching down in there. So we're going to slip down there, get above it, and just call down into it and just set up. And again, have the mindset they're probably not going to gobble. They may, mm-hmm. but it's going to be hard to hear them if they do, if they're kind of far away. But let's just see if we can soft call one in. And again, soft to medium call and getting because of the wind and try to see if we can draw one up. And we ease our way through there, had to go through some real nasty, thick stuff, get up to the edge of the drainage. And when we got to the edge of the drainage, I'm like, there are tur- there's got to be turkeys here. Like, it just looked turkey. Like, the tops were, like, good nesting habitat. You know, cover that was, like, you know, knee to thigh high maybe, but it was, like, not so thick you can't walk through it. And it's, like, the ground was pretty barren. I'm like, turkeys could definitely nest up in here. I'm like, I bet you there's hens here, and those gobblers are kind of getting down these drainages, gobbling off these little points. We walked down, and we finally ended up getting set up. I I told Thomas I was very nervous about, because it it got real sunny. It was warm, but it was a pretty good breeze. I'm like, these turkeys are going to be down here. This bottom's super open. We just can't go diving off of this bottom because, like, a turkey's going to see us from really far away. Like, we need to stay up here by the cover on the top military crest of the ridge, like, right where it rolls over. And we find a tree. And when we sit down, I'm like, it's not the best spot, but if we can get a bird within 45 yards or so, like, we'll be able to – like, we can see further than that. But if he's looking up at us, there's all this cover in and around us and to our back that, like, there's a good chance if he hears calling, if a turkey does come from that direction, he's not going to be able to see where he thinks the hen's at, mm-hmm. and he's going to have to come up here. Um, and I told Thomas, we get set up and I was like, man, you know, it's not a great morning. You know, we might have to wrap it up at some point, you know, before one o'clock at the cutoff, but 
let's sit here for at least 45 minutes and just see what happens. We get there about 9.45, and we sit down, get here comfortable, again, to start doing calling sequences. Again, media, like soft to like medium calling. Um, every now and then, you know, I was trying to call in between the wind gusts, and, I mean, I think Thomas lost all hope in me at that point. He, yeah. He's just sitting there. I mean, he's about falling asleep in his little, <clears throat> his little turkey chair because he doesn't have a turkey vest. So Yeah. And, and what I'll say as a, a, a hunter that has not turkey hunted much at all, in, my, in a new turkey hunter in mine, at least in my mind, I'm thinking if they're not gobbling, you can't kill them. Like that's my mindset as a new turkey hunter, if that makes sense. So that confidence that Jacob had going into that spot – and, um, you know, listen to the birds before and the day before he knew they were in there and how that, you know, sets up for the turkeys makes sense, which in my head, obviously I didn't understand that at that point. Um, so the confidence and then also the patience, um, played a big part. Yeah. Pa- the three P's coach Ron talked about played a factor, patience, persistence, and positioning all played a factor. Cause I think if we would have dropped down lower in elevation, we ended up again killing a bird, but. If we would drop lower in elevation, we might have bumped the wind and or there was way less cover, like really big hardwood drainage. I mean, just big trees. I mean, yeah, you can sit up against a tree, but it's just – it'd be hard. If the turkey came off, you know, came into you at a 45-degree angle and wasn't right down the gun barrel, it would have to take a lot for you to get be able to swing on that turkey. Like, you'd have to go behind a big tree or something. So, that was a huge factor in the patient's persistence. But we've been sitting there for a while. I'm getting – the sun's hitting me. I'm like, man, this is comfy. I take a little nap. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm soft calling. I'm like, dude, I soft called, and uh, you just purred yourself right. To dude, sleep. I'm telling you, and I just, yeah. dude, I, 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 the sun was hitting me right, and I was just like, you know, the wind and the noise, like, oh, this is great, <laughs> dude. So like, I'm like leaning up against my vest, and I'm like, cause I'm like, Shane Simpson from his channel Calling All Turkeys, the Shane Simpson hunting on YouTube. He talks about that. Like, if it's slow, he'll take a nap in the woods, and just like, in just. You know, if you go deep sleep, it's fine. But hopefully you get woken up by drumming or gobbling or footsteps. Something like that will wake you back up. And uh, I had Thomas there. I'm like, you know, I'm just going to take a nap. Well, I do maybe 10 minutes, something like that. And then Thomas, it gets to like be about 930 or 1030. And Thomas is like, let's go, dude. It's been 45 minutes. I'm like, let's just give it a few more minutes. Like, let's just give it some chance. He called it. And he said they're going to come in silent is yeah, what he said. Well, because I killed some other birds within a, you know, I think, I killed one on that last one on Wednesday. Now he gobbled real good. I got him laying right here, which we measured his spurs and right on an inch and a half. And uh, I'm like, he he was one I killed that came in loud, like gobbling, strutting, spit drumming the whole nine yards. But th- two of the other turkeys, really three of the other turkeys, never really gobbled. Like they just came in silent. Like heard them on the roost, got in position, soft call. They came in, kind of looking for the hen, and was able to get a shot on them. So with the high winds, I'm like, that's a, that's what I think they were going to do to a tee. And I was like, this is sit here because at some point they're going to come through here. Like, just because the way the terrain li- laid out, they're going to be down in this, like, right here below us at some point. If we keep soft calling, we can draw them up here. And it probably had been maybe 15 minutes since I'd called. And uh, Tom was like, no, I'll dude. Take, I'll take it over from here. So yeah. it's, it's, <laughs> it's 1030 on the dot. And I say something. I look, actually, I look over to him and he's asleep. I'm like, dude, this dude is asleep. Let's go. I stand up 1032. I stand up. I look back at Jacob, and I'm like, dude, let's go. And I look back down the hill, and I see this black blob. And I'm like, <laughs> and at this point, I am talking. I'm, I'm moving. I'm not really caring much. As yeah, about, he, as he's my, standing. Yeah, standing up. Bro. And I look down, mm. and I see the black blob, and I don't say anything to Jacob. I, I look at it, and then I look back at Jacob, and I look back, and it's moved. I'm like, Jacob, and then it, it goes to full strut. I'm like Jacob. There is a big. I say no, Tom. He freaks out. He's yeah. like, he's like, he drops back down and he's moving. Like, dude, he, you jump back down. And you're like, big Tom, big Tom, two, two. There's two of them. Oh, there, there's a third. There's, there's third. I'm like, and I'm like, I think he's pulling my leg, dude. Because yeah. I think he had done that that morning or something. Uh, like, like while we were walking, yeah, while we were yeah. walking, and I thought he's joking. Well, he gets the gun up and like makes sure the red dot's on. And he's like, I'm like, no, no. He's like, they're coming right to us, dude. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm thinking, I'm like, how did they not just see you? Now we had good cover around us and good back cover, and we're kind of in the shadows, and it was real sunny. But I'm like, there's no way they didn't see you. And all of a sudden. From behind this oak tree, way out in front of us, I just see this long beard step out. I'm like, he's not lying. He was full <laughs> strut, yeah. and he, he did, he's awake. He, he's full strut, and I'm like, I'm like hunching down. Wait, the tree so you like were this. asleep when? No, was- I, no, I, I, I was, I take, I was taking that nap, and Thomas was like, dude, let's go. And I like woke up. I was like, 
I think when you give some more time, he's like, dude, I want to go back to the truck. I'm like, okay, sure, hunt. If you want to go back to the truck, we can go back to the truck. And that's when he stood up and all this <laughs> happened. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, anyways, yeah. So, we get down and, you know, settled in. Heart starts racing. And it turns out, like, we can see and you can hear more turkeys walking around. And I saw the two originally. Two, two what? Two gobblers. Um, down. And they're probably at, like, 60, 70 yards, probably. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, down at the bottom. Yeah, 70, 80 probably. Yeah, 70, 80. So then Jacob starts doing uh, some of his uh, soft calling, you know, yelps. I mean, uh, super soft. Yeah, like purrs. I mean, it's like on the last couple of podcasts, especially like, you know, how he's talking like, I couldn't even hear him type softness. Mm -hmm. That's what he was doing. And uh, then Jacob sees the hen that was with them a little more close to well, us. Well, we got to specify one thing. He's like, there's two gobblers. I see two birds. I see a gobbler and I see a hen. I'm like, maybe he mistaked the other one for a gobbler. <laughs> I never thought there was two gobblers. I never, I see one gobbler, I see one hen. That's it. Yeah. And mm -hmm. he said, I see two gobblers. So I thought he got confused or something. Just saw two birds, saw one of them strutting almost two gobblers. So I'm watching this hen and the hen, she's coming towards us and she's like just scratching around. They stop. They get down there probably like, again, they probably stop at 65, 70 yards. They stop. And she's scratching, he's drumming, or and, you know, he, he's he's in full strut, kind of spinning around. So I'm like, I gotta get this hen up here. Like he, I don't think he's gonna leave the hen. And I'm like, I'm not gonna call super aggressive. And just sitting there super soft purring and super soft clucking. And you can see, I can watch the hen because we had three big oak trees right in front of us. And me and Thomas are on the same tree, but he's to my right, I'm to his left. So like when I could see down there, he'd have a tree in the way. Mm -hmm. Like we're only, we're only sitting, you know, our heads are probably only, you know, 18 20 to 24 inches apart from each other. And when I'm seeing birds, he can't see at least the ones I'm looking at. Yeah. And he can't see, he's like, Oh, I see him. I see him. He's looking at a different bird the whole yeah. time. So I'm looking at the yeah. gobbler. Yeah. I'm seeing the hen. I'm soft calling. And all of a sudden that hen would stick her head up looking at us and the gobbler drop strut and look up at us. And I just, I just keep doing, I got, we had a good cover. I just keep soft purring and clucking and I'd stop. And then that hen, she like disappeared for a little bit. And then, like, I see her. She's a little bit closer now. She just keeps soft purring and clucking. Purring and clucking. Super soft yelps. She kind of look over there, and she, she just kind of keep on walking and kind of scratch her way up through this. Mm -hmm. And this goes on for probably 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Yep. Where they, I mean, he's driven. Dude, there's times, like, he gets in the shade, and the sun would come back out of the clouds, and it was, like, so dark. I'm like, I can't see him. Like, like neither of us move. I don't know where he's at. And then the cloud cover would come back, and then he's still standing right there. He was just, like, in the shade, like, in that harsh shade. Yeah. And finally, I'm doing this back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I'm like, Thomas, he's in the – like, you could kill him. I was thinking, like, if I had the gun, I could kill him right there. Like, he's drifting up towards us. He's in the wide open for me. Thomas, I'm like, dude, he's right there. He's like, I don't see him. I don't see him. Well, there's, yeah, three big trees. Well, the one tree that was right in front of me and the turkey that I shot mm – -hmm was way bigger and the turkey the gobbler behind him that i was looking at he was still so far and so you know back down the hill there was a lot of brush i was like how can how would he be able to shoot this turkey right now like there was no way to shoot it and at that point that hen started working up even closer to us i never saw the hen yeah you never saw the hen i never actually saw the hen until she got spooked a little bit but then kind of jump forward she finally i'm still just soft calling Next thing I know, I, I'm like looking over Thomas's shoulder over the gun barrel, and I see this hen, and she's 30 yards from us. I'm like, dude, she's coming. Do not move. Oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you, when he wanted to leave, I took my face mask off. I'm like, okay. He took his face mask. We don't have any face masks. I got a beard. It kind of helps a little bit, kind of hides a little <laughs> whiteness in my skin. Thomas, as y'all can see on the video camera, baby-faced, okay? And I'm like, you know, sun's kind of hitting us. I'm like, kind of glowing. I'm like, just don't make eye contact. Keep your head on the gun. Have your hat low. Just don't look at her. And dude, I'm sitting there, and I can't do anything. Like I'm just like trying to pull my head down, dude. And I'm still trying to look at the gobbler, but I'm trying to pull my head down so like she's not looking at me. And dude, she gets up to maybe 15 yards, and the gobbler's coming. The gobbler I'm looking at, he's coming up the ridge, and I see, and I'm like, I'm like, this is gonna be bad. Like she's gonna bust us. And finally, I hear pop, 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 and she throws that head up, dude, looking at us. And I'm like, oh, crap. I'm like Tom. I was just thinking my head like. He's going to have to shoot this bird. I think he can see the gobbler. He still can't see it at this yeah. point. I'm looking right at him. He's probably 40 yards at this point. Mm -hmm. And he's just, he, when she starts putting, he drops strut. And she goes running back down the hill to him. Oh, so she like ran off. Oh, yeah. She goes down the hill. And while she's doing it, she's putting. And I start just going right back at her. Pop, 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 pop. 
she stops. She stops, throws that head back up, and like looks back up the ridge. Mm-hmm. And when she was running down to him, he was like, "I'm getting out of here." So he kept he moved down a little bit. Well, when I did that, he goes back in full stride. I'm like, "Thomas, you got to shoot this turkey. Lean around this tree." Yeah. So, little, so I see the to- the gobbler I saw behind the one you were looking at is right at like what you were thinking was like 35 yards, mm-hmm. right? So I'm on the second turkey further back, and I go pull the trigger it doesn't that's the pull. one you were shooting at yeah <laughs> the initial time you know when i pulled Thank it, it didn't God, do anything the gun did not go off so he has an over under that i'm yeah. sure you've talked about yeah. and if you don't close it all the way and makes a click it like it, it won't doesn't even pull. set the trigger yeah so he's like the hens you I'm know do her thing i had to open it close it back oh he's making so much movement dude yeah, like he's he's like trying to break it open, close it back. And I'm still <laughs> while he's doing this, I'm still cutting at this hen and like you're trying to get her to yeah. stop and she stopped. But I'm still doing it because she's still doing it. I'm just going back and forth. Gobbler's back up and strut. So then he that gobbler is working back to, back right. I'm like, okay, it's got to be the other the the other one you're looking at. So the tree's you know 10, 15 yards in front of us. So I had to lean. I was like lean around the tree. Lean around the tree. The gun's forty five degree. Not up and down. Mm-hmm. And I had that one gap that was probably, I would say, 10 to 15 inches mm-hmm. maybe. And uh, he popped his head up for like a split second and I shoot. Yeah, drop strut, kill yeah, him. You drop strut, killed him or shot him. And he starts going out. Jake was like, get him. Yeah, he starts, <laughs> he starts, dude, he starts falling. I'm thinking, I'm thinking yeah. Thomas is definitely going to miss this turkey. Because, I mean, yeah. he's in his chair and he's cocked. Way like, to have confidence. <laughs> well, I'm like, dude, I probably would have missed. That's what I'm saying. Uh, props to him. He, he actually, when this turkey starts going to flopping, I'm like, go get him, go get him. He goes flying down this ridge. <laughs> All in. <laughs> you got you got the wind in your ears. Dude, I'm dude. talking like, I'm you talking know about, the one that you talked about where you've never fell hard I wish, enough? I wish someone had clocked me the other day when I was chasing my turkey. Well, I wasn't chasing him. He was dead. But like running over there, dude, I yeah. wish someone timed it. <laughs> <laughs> you were moving. I was moving, dude. dude. Thomas is 40, 40 yard time going downhill is fast okay <laughs> yeah but he so he starts running and this turkey's like flopping flopping he goes running and i'm like i'm i'm like i can't believe he just killed this turkey and as he's doing it, i'm like dang he's he's running for a second and he gets down he grabs a turkey and like he doesn't know what to grab so he's just grabbing onto the feathers okay like you <laughs> I know, grab, no i grab dude i'm like i'm like i can just picture yeah, I him dude, like dude, 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 let me tell you Let's oh look, no. no i gotta say this so He's like grabbing at the, I'm like, I, I, I didn't want to yell because he said this, there's another gobbler there or something like that. And I still didn't ever saw the bird. And I'm like, step on his head, step on his head. Well, he's finally, he gets, what did you do? You finally, did you step on his head? Yeah. And it, he steps on the head of the turkey and the turkey stopped flopping. I, I, I run down there to him. I get down there to him and I'm like, hey, dude, he's hyped. I'm talk, talk, explain that emotion real quick and I'll get. To yeah, that was like one of the best adrenaline rushes I've ever had hunting. And that's deer everything. Um, bear, black bear. Yeah. Yeah. This one was, Oh yeah. You've killed a black bear. Yeah. Really? So more than a black bear. Like the, the, was the black bear more scary. fear? That yeah. was, that was like <laughs> fear. And I was deer. So yeah. I don't want to go into that story, but that was like, caught me so off guard. It was like, what do I do? You know, like, I'm going to get eaten. Yeah. I shoot up <laughs> Cause, cause, cause those were, that was two At black 12 bear. yards yeah. on the ground. But, uh, no, this one was cause it was like that. The lowest of lows, not that I've yeah, put in yeah. that much time in the season or anything, but you know, not having any confidence in that spot and then shooting them and like how it went down as yeah. far as the shot and everything, just hyped up over the shot because the shot was 50. Oh, it's 52. Yeah, 52 I ended, I ended up down there and ranging back to like where he originally shot him from because he fought a little bit further. Where he originally shot him from was 52 yards. Was, I've, we shot our gun at 50 and it shoots a nasty pattern at 50, but it's still further than I like to shoot one. Like, I want to yeah. get him in closer. Um, but one thing we didn't talk about was this turkey never gobbled. Again, I never could see the other turkey. Well, we have somebody drive by with a four wheeler on the road, and when the, this four wheeler comes, I'm like, man, someone's driving. He's like, I wonder, I wonder what these turkeys are gonna do if they're gonna spook or not. Like they're in a pretty good spot, dude. This four wheeler gets probably maybe 600 yards from us, and he like he like revs it or something. And that turkey bah, gobbles at it, and I'm like, no freaking way. And then the the, the four wheeler gets closer and uh, you know passes everything, and um, he gobbles again at it. And I'm like, are you kidding me? This turkey, like, you know, he, this turkey was hot for, at that moment. He didn't want to gobble any other time, but, you know, he gobbled at the four-wheeler. The but, brand new locator call, yeah. four-wheeler. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I, hey, I've heard four or five times this season, loud exhaust. When I shot this turkey right here, uh-huh. some dude was trying to locate some from a hop from one of the roads. 
And he, he had one of these loud trucks. Again, not a big fan of loud exhaust trucks. I know they sound cool, but for hunting purposes, I'm not a big fan. And, dude, he started that truck back up. The second, he went, bop, 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 bop. Dude, that turkey, this turkey hammered it. Oh, so he got out and hit, like, what, a crow? Yeah. And or, it didn't or, got- or he owl called. It was early. Oh, he was still on the roost. That's hilarious. And, like, where he was at, there was no way he was going to hear that turkey. But I could hear him. And, dude, he started that truck up and... It, I gobbled right at that truck. That's hilarious. Dang. He's getting out hooting, and then the minute he gets in the truck, one gobbles. Yeah, that's like, hilarious. Right at the truck. So, but in, but so I get down there. Thomas is like, I mean, he's freaking. I mean, this dude is on cloud nine. Yeah. Okay. And I get down there, and I'm like, Did you body shot this turkey? There was breast feathers everywhere. <laughs> dude, I, there was, I get down there, and there's like he's miss, he's missing missing a patch that's like maybe like seven eight inches in diameter. Uh, on the side of his, on his breast. But that was for me <laughs> grabbing him. Dude, well, I, he just went to grabbing the turkey, man. No I, I, no, I pulled those out on accident when I was trying to grab them. I'm like, grab that's, the- that's a good way to get spurred. Yeah. Yeah. It, well, you yeah. only do that one time. But, dude, yeah. I just got there's feathers everywhere. I'm like, did you body shot? And I saw there's no, there no pelts that I could see right there in that, in that where he's missing feathers. But he's like, no, that's where I grabbed him. I didn't know where to grab him. All right, next time, step on his head, grab his head, don't grab his feet. Because they're kicking, you're going to come back with some puncture holes. So they got some shot spurs. Mm. Trip to uh, the ER, get a couple stitches. But, but Thomas, what was like the overall? That was your first turkey. Yeah. And just crazy hunt, crazy shot, executed perfectly. We actually walked the shot back and like found the path exactly where he shot. And you could see where he thread the pattern right through those trees. And there would be pellets on either side of that gap. There was pellets in that tree. And he just threw the center of that pattern right through there and hammer that bird. That's yeah. what I'm talking about, dude. I was like, how did you miss twice with this gun? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Dang. Yep. Yeah. But uh, and t- pull up uh, those spurs and that beard from that bird because we got them all right here for the, v- the YouTube viewers. So he's got kind of like ivory bases on the spurs and the tips of them. Or and they're sharp you. and they're, they're black. Really pretty. And really good beard. I think that was 11 and some change, something like that. I think that one was right at 11. Yeah. But, uh, so we do that, okay? Now, Thomas, listen, this is when Thomas, the switch had been flipped. He's like, this is awesome. More adrenaline than deer hunting or bear hunting or blood, whatever. Yeah, y'all, 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 are, y'all are just like, you Myers, I swear. <laughs> Never excited about something until something happens and you're like, oh, this is awesome, man. Yeah. Yeah, it's part of the genetics, man. It's like the <laughs> yeah. roller coaster effect. Yeah, the roller coaster. Um, but afterwards, you know, we're walking back, dude. I mean, he, he's, he's on cloud nine and, and I'm like, now what? Cause I'm thinking like, okay, you know, he's done. He ain't gonna tur- we'll probably want to turkey hunt again, even though he's all excited. He's like, he texts me like later that day, and this is Saturday, Sunday. I was gonna take Anthony. We we're gonna go back to that same spot, try to kill the other gobbler, and ended up striking out. It was super windy. Never heard a bird. You know, just found sign, heard a fly down, but never gobbles. Nothing ever came in. Well, Thomas texts me maybe Sunday night. He's like, dude, Wednesday's gonna be the best weather day. No wind. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be cool. And I'm like, you have a job. Like you're. Like, you got your job. We can go early. <laughs> yeah, that's a, and I'm like, we're gonna get Thomas in trouble. Yeah, man. we don't talk about it too much. Anyways, he's like, he's like, uh, he's like, I think I can go. I think I can go Wednesday. And I'm like, if you you tell me what your schedule looks like on Monday when you get everything lined up, who you're gonna go see. If you're free Wednesday, we'll go Wednesday. And he texts me Monday like afternoon. He's like, I'm good to go for Wednesday. <laughs> so we went out and Wednesday we went to so three birds. Again. Well, let's yeah. Let's, um, so this is interesting. Well, yeah, we did we. We were trying to go to two different gates. We were trying to go to where the three birds were at, and there was another gate a little bit further down the road, which is close to where we shot the first bird. And you, from there, you could hear both of the, the – where Thomas killed his bird and the other bird was at, and you also you can hear the other side of the road, which looks really good for turkeys. And we get – dude, I told him, like, we need to wake up. It's, it's Wednesday. There's probably not that many guys out. It's kind of late season. But, like, we still need to get there by, like, 4 a.m. We need to get to the gate. We get there. He, You know, I get to my spot. He drives down to his spot, and what we were going to do is he was going to listen down there. I was going to listen here, and we try to communicate like who was hearing birds, and then figure out where we wanted to go. He drives down. He ain't been gone for five minutes, and I get a phone call. I'm like, "Oh, this is weird." Answer, and then what you tell me? I was like, "Well, I thought it was just like there's a truck parked at the gate." <laughs> oh, I was man. like, "Dang!" At what time? Four. O'clock? That was like either right before four or right after. Yeah, I mean, it was close. Three fifty-five, yeah. three fifty, something like, like it that. It was early. There's already a dude there. Yeah, on a Wednesday. Yeah, no joke. And I'm yep. like, dang, dude. And I'm like, well, that. Well, I know there's birds back there. I mean, I already thought there was birds back there, but the dude was in there. So I'm like, well, he's like, now what? Are we we should have left him a thank you note. Yeah, we should have actually. <laughs> so he comes. I'm like, just come back down here. Look, we'll figure out something. So he came back down. We talked to him like. 
you go in here because you're familiar with this spot. Go back down here and listen for these three birds. I'm going to go to a different section where I've already killed two. And we'll go, like, I know there's more birds in there. I'll go over there and listen and see if I can hear some. We split off. I get to my spot. He goes in his spot. And it gets to, like, 530. I'm thinking, I'm like, man, where's, where's these gobblers at? And like, no service. Yeah, yeah. No, ser- no service. Well, you, I had service. You didn't have service. Yeah. Because, anyways, <clears throat> where you went down into. So, 535 when gobbles on the roost. And I'm like, yes. I'm like, good. Get an onyx up. Use that compass feature, which is awesome. Got it lined up. I was like, okay, I think I was pretty. I'm like, I think I know exactly the tree he's in because I've seen other turkeys roost in this specific tree. Drop, you know, didn't really have to drop a pin, but I'm like, I think he's right there. Gobbled again, gobbled again, gobbled three times on the roost. You got to like 545. Their fly down is about 550, 545, something like that. Didn't hear another one. And I'm like, I, I text Thomas, like, hey, dude, we got a bird. Like, you know, you need to come over here. And it took probably a few minutes for the for it to go through. Like, it said it sent on my end, but I'm like, I don't know if Thomas got it. Yeah. And I text him again. I was like, hey, you need to get here now. Like, we got to walk into this spot because I got to go park at this other area to go walk in because they were across the road. And um, I I get in that position. And I call Thomas. I'm like, where? I'm like, I didn't get any responses. Had to walk back down to the truck. And uh, he, so, found, he answers. You answer. Yeah, somehow – like, I had no service because I was trying to text him when I was set up and stuff. Nothing would go through. And somehow, his text comes through that he heard a gobble. So, I'm like, at this time, it's like 540. Mm-hmm. So, I'm like, well, I haven't heard anything. So, I'm just going to, because I knew where you were. Mm-hmm. I was like, I'm going to start packing up and walk up the hill and get cell service. And then the next text that comes through is, hurry, get here now. We can kill him. <laughs> so, when that, when that, what he said. so, when that happened, I end up pulling to this other spot to park at, okay? And I walk, I get out of the truck. Second I get out of the truck, he's gobbling. He's on the ground. And he's just, mm. I mean, gobble and gobble. And go- I'm like, get here now, dude. And finally, uh, you get in the I'm truck like, and you're just no, like, Err! dude, I am that. It was actually funny. I'm like, probably more than a quarter of a mile, but not quite half a mile mm-hmm. down this. And it's all up here towards my car. So I'm running <laughs> up this hill back to my car. By the time I get there, you know, like, in high school or college, you're playing like intramurals or high school football or something, mm-hmm. and you get back from summer and you have spring ball, and you have that first run, and your chest uh. is like hurting, <laughs> like hurting. Burning. That's how, yeah, burning is what it was like. I got back to my car, and I'm like, <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> open up my car door, I chug half my bottle of water, and I am flying in my car down this dirt road. Car. Uh, car. Not a truck. What'd I say? No, he, no, he, no. I'm just saying like oh, you're driving yeah, a car, not a, a car. Truck. Yeah. I'm just imagining like some guy standing up, you know, above the road listening and you just come tearing oh, through. I mean, I'm talking drifting. about speed Look, demon. He, he texted me at five, like I got at like probably 548. <laughs> I was at him before six. Oh, I don't know about that. It was round. It was like yeah. five. But in, I mean, six. He, when, by the time he shows up, this turkey's gobbled 25 times. Oh, okay. Man. And he's just gobbling, gobbling, gobbling. And then I hear another one. There's two. I hear another one gobble. And they're kind of like, kind of, they're in the thermal hub, which again, we just talked about on Monday's episode. And he, they're kind of in a thermal hub, like one's off one point, one's off another point. Mm-hmm. Well, the one that's off the further point to my left, he's the one that's been gobbling really good. The other one only gobbled once or twice. And Thomas shows up. I'm like, get your stuff. I'm ready. Like, get your stuff and let's go. Here's your shotgun. Use my shotgun. Use my $12 shells. And like, <laughs> let, let, let's go after him. While he's packing his stuff up, he gobbles again. I'm like, he just gobbled again. He's like, what? And I'm like, he just gobbled again while you're like packing your crap up. So like, let's go kill him. We go in there, make a, make a little loop. I'm like, hey, we're going to get on the back side. I'm like, we're going to put him between, we're going to put the turkey between us and the truck. We're not going to call him from the road. We're going to swing behind him and get up on the ridge top above him and call him up there. Is this the spot <clears throat> that I hunted? Yep. Okay. Yep. And um, positioning was like the key in this. Like that was the one thing I took away from this hunt. Yeah. Was now, pos- so going into this, Thomas, what was your, what was your, uh, I guess, mindset going from a pretty silent, slow turkey hunt, and now you've got kind of the polar opposite. It's yep. like hard goblin. You know, he's doing the thing. You got to make a big move on him. Yeah. But where, where are you at mentally at this point? I was feeling a lot better. <laughs> well, he never heard the turkey gobble, right? I didn't hear him in. No, yeah. That's the thing. So oh, when okay. I got to the. I was like, man, is this dude actually hearing a gobble? Because I. <laughs> but I was packing up my stuff so I couldn't hear anything. But so when we swung all the way around and got up to that point on top 
where that road goes. Yeah, where we found that shed. Um, Pretty good one. Found a participation trophy on the way in. Yeah, that was sweet. He's not very wide, but dude, he's thick. Yeah, it's the heavy antler. When Anyways. we were walking through, he just saw that, and I saw him peeling off the trail. I was yeah. like, where is he going? Yeah. I saw that. But, yeah, so when we got up to that point, I still haven't heard him gobble yet, and we get to the edge of the hardwoods that drop down into this bottom. And this, and he, is, this is a burn, by the way. Yeah, a burn. So this is a this is a burn, and, yeah, we get to the edge of the hardwoods, and it's like it goes from, like, pines to hardwoods right there. And – what did I call at that point? Mm-mm. No, like we haven't called her anything at this point, and like my confidence was high just because of how he showed me when we were looking at Onyx on the way in. I mean, this bird had to either, I mean, he had to go our direction, whether it was on our side of the ridge or the opposite side towards those pines, unless you wanted to walk across the road, unless yeah. he, well, yeah, but then, yeah, I haven't so, seen it in the other side of the road, it's not, yeah, great looking. Mm-hmm. So, once we get to the hardwoods. He hammers, and I'm like, oh, dude, and he sounds pretty close, like probably 250, 200, yeah, 200, 200 something. something like that. So confidence-wise, it was a lot better <laughs> feeling in this hunt. Yeah, and well, then, we get to the hardwoods, and when we get to the hardwoods, I'm like, there's not as many big trees as I thought there were. Mm. But I thought there would be on this little ridge point that dropped down. And we're coming out on one ridge. There's a big holler, which we never use that term, but like drainage, mm-hmm. not a ditch, a drainage. Uh, between us and the bird. The bird's off that next point over from us, like to our right. And I'm like, I, I got to there at the top, and I'm like, we don't need to like skyline ourselves because I don't know how, I don't know exactly what side of the point he's on. Like when he gobbled, it sounded pretty clear like he was on our side. Yep. But I'm like, I went through my mind, I'm like, I don't want to set up on his side of our ridge point, like facing him, looking down the ditch, because I'm thinking it's a really good way where he can hear us really well and also hang up because it's pretty open in there. So I'm like, let's get off the back side of our ridge point. So we're putting a ditch and our ridge in between us and the bird and get set up and try to call him across the ditch and then up this uh, or across the drainage and up our ridge. And we do that. And I'm like, Thomas, go sit. There's a little little oak tree that's probably, I don't know, it was probably a little bigger than that, maybe 14 inches diameter. He sits on it, and while he's setting up, I'm, I start calling. So I, I stand kind of up the ridge from us, like to the right of the tree that we were going to set up on, and I just start calling, you know, doing kind of soft yelps, some clucks and purrs, no response. But I'm just kind of soft calling, and uh, he didn't respond to that, right? No, he did. He did? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, he gobbled me once or whatever. I do that. He gets set up. I then run to him. So I, I do that probably 25 to 30 yards. Actually, where I called him from. That's where, he, that's he, a, where he walked. That's exactly where he walked to. Yeah. So I called him from right there, and then we I just book it to that tree. And where we're sitting, it's probably, from that tree, it's probably 30-something, maybe 30, 35 yards to the crest of the ridge. Mm-hmm. And there's, like, some, you know, burn up little saplings in there and stuff like that. So there's, like, hard cover, but there's no leaves in there, if that makes any sense. Yeah. The ground's kind of burn up. There's no mm-hmm. leaves on, on the bushes or anything like that with saplings. We get set up, and I start, when I set up again, when we sit down, I start clucking and purring. No more soft, no more yelping, just clucking and purring. He answers, I start clucking, he answers me, cuts me off. And at that time, when he gobbled that second time, he's now on his side, or he's facing us on his side of the ridge. And uh, I'm like, he, he's going to be coming, and I stop. And then probably give him a couple minutes, ask to start soft clucking and purring, and he starts gobbling. Now he's down the bottom. When he gobbled down the bottom, I'm like, Thomas, run. Run up to that next tree. Get off this tree. You need to get up, you need to get up above me. Like, you need to be able to shoot in case he doesn't want to crest all the way to the top. Yeah. You need to be able to shoot across that crest. So, I'm like, go up five yards, sit on that tree, and get set up. So, he does it, just books it over there. And while he's doing it, I'm soft calling to kind of, if he's making noise, make it sound like, again, he's yep. kicking around. And, uh, he gobbles again. Thomas sits down, and Thomas explain what was the so, thought process when you ran up to that tree. When I got up to the tree, I was like, "Game on!" Like this bird is coming. Yeah. I did not in my head. I was like, "This bird's not getting hung up." Like the way he moved, probably 150 yards to the the last gobble when I moved up. Mm-hmm. Like that turkey was coming in quick. He was doing it. Yeah, he was doing his thing. So when I set up on that tree, Jacob's still kind of soft calling, mm-hmm. and I can hear him behind me and. At this point, he ha- hasn't gobbled since he got to the bottom of the drainage mm-hmm. yeah. in front of us. Yeah, he went quiet for He went quiet, and I can hear walking, mm. and it was more to the left, so I was set up a little more left, and I hear him sp- spit drum. No, oh, you don't hear... I hear the spit. We, we, we've gone back and forth. He can't hear the drum, but he can hear, hear yeah. the spit. I mean, you, you can hear the drum. Yeah. You just have to tune up. You got to yeah. listen for it. So I hear walking, and I hear... And not, not the drumming part, but... Yeah. 
Yeah. Boom. And he's basically straight in my face. Over and then the crest. Over the crest. And then he... <laughs> right there. The, like At this point, I haven't called anymore. Like, by the time, when Tom, after Thomas... Got set up. I put the call down. Like he's gonna, he's gonna die. Like this is it. Yeah. So he gobbles right there, and now he's more working up to where Jacob initially called from. Okay. More upper, upper up, point, upper point a little bit, about twenty five yards. And I can hear him spitting and walking directly to where Jacob was calling. And I and I start swinging my gun, and he just what? No. Yes. No. Yeah. Keep going. <laughs> you made me real nervous about this, but keep going. <laughs> yeah. So I'm swinging my gun. And I see him pop up, but there was like, there was no leaves on these little saplings, saplings, Mm -hmm. but like it was dense. Like that one where he first popped up at was pretty dense. So I I saw him for, you know, the split second he pokes his head up and I was like, can't shoot him. He goes back down and walks like another two yards, still through stuff, but it wasn't bad. Mm -hmm. So then, I mean, he's not even looking in our direction. He's looking straight up the ridge towards the the clear cut that was burnt. Yeah. Yeah. And I get on him, shoot, folds. He does a little bit of flopping. He bar- I mean, I yeah. don't think he flopped. Yeah, he, he didn't do much. He might have flicked his wing once or twice, and then he just laid there. Like, I didn't even go to the board. I didn't run to the board this time. As soon as I shot and he hit the ground, I got up. Come on. <laughs> Look back at Jacob. And I went over there. I think yeah. I, I put my call down. I was like, yep, that's that's how you do it. That's two. So, so Thomas scared the crap out of me because when this turkey, I could hear him, I could hear him drumming before he ever gobbled again. Like once Thomas repositioned, I could start hearing him drumming. I'm like, does he know where this turkey's at? Because he's pointed, Thomas like was pointed over the top of the ridge. And I'm like, I hear it to the right. And then he gobbles to the right. Dude, he gobbles. He's 45 yards, maybe 50. I mean, he's over the crest, barely. And Thomas all of a sudden goes like, he like jump, he like kind of shifts his back. He like gets his gun over. Here. Like it wasn't smooth. And I'm like, Tom, I'm like, slow down, slow down. <laughs> and uh, th- then because I could see him probably better than Thomas could. Like when Thomas said like he first popped up and he was like in some thick stuff. I had a wide open view of him. And I was like, crap, maybe he should have sat here. <laughs> so you see that there. But I wanted to move up because he got up past some saplings that was kind of in front of him that I thought he would have to shoot through a bunch like a bunch of stuff in order to kill a turkey. Yeah. But like yeah, when he came up, dude, he never looked. At my tree, never looked at Thomas. He kept looking like up that little ridge point and then down in the drainage back to my right. Yeah. Like I don't know with a soft call if it like was echoing up that because we're on the backside of the ridge. But yet that turkey never even looked at us. Yeah. And like Thomas just folded that bird. Yeah. And so you said you killed him in a burn. One of the things I noticed when y'all posted those pictures is his feet yeah, are that's black. What I was gonna show. Yeah. Like the bottoms of his feet are just like hey, here, let me see hold one this one. Turkey. And then compared to a no burn turkey. Yeah, I mean, like here I'll hold it or hold it on this camera right here. So, yeah. like, the one with the burn, I don't know how well it's going to pick up on the camera, but on the pictures, it was, like, super, super noticeable. This is the burn one. I mean, dude, his feet are just, like, you can tell what he was walking around in. That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, pretty good hooks on him, too, boy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all the turkeys that, that our group has killed this year have been, like, good turkeys, mm-hmm. man, like, real good turkeys. Um so, second bird, what, how, how did it compare to the first one? Which, yeah, one, which yeah. one do you like more? Definitely the second one. <laughs> Definitely, dude, the way that turkey moved on us at, like... The, the speed. The speed we didn't sit the on tur- we, didn't spend, we didn't sit 10 minutes on a turkey. No, yeah. yeah. Like, by the time we sat up, it was probably <laughs> right at five, six minutes. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome, man, when it happens like that. There's certain things that, that they do where you're just like, I don't know, especially after you've been doing it for a while... Where when they do it, you're like, oh, he, he's he's about to get it. You like know, that is the, like cutting yeah. the distance like now, that. And see the one thing, and Thomas learned a lot because he was like, dude, that calling was legit. Like talking about, like soft calling because yeah. it was so open. I'm like, I didn't want to call loud and like, I, I, I talked about this on the podcast because we killed that bird when we recorded last Thursday's episode, yeah. and I was talking about like there is something that happens to me. Maybe it's not everybody, but like when a turkey's gobbling real good, I just feel like I have to call loud to him. Oh, yeah. Like, it's just like something like, I've got to call, like, I got to, like, let him know. And I'm like, he can hear so good, you don't have to do that large, oh, that loud. Oh, yeah. I mean, because Thomas, like, if you had to, like, describe, like, percentage of, like, zero, no calling to 100% as loud as I could go, what do you think it was when he was on that far ridge? And I'm in front of you, though? Or, or am I or sitting next to you? Both. Like, when I'm sitting right next to you, out of 100, it's probably, I would say, less than 25. Mm-hmm. Maybe twenty five. Yeah, yeah. And then like when I'm when I was ten yards in front of you, set up on that tree, mm-hmm. 
It was like, I can't tell if that's him calling or just like my ears hearing something. Like that's how low it wow. is. Yeah. That's that's pretty cool. Um, then the, the next hunt, was that the humid day? The the next hunt? Or did y'all kill three in a row? No, no, we we can't we didn't hunt again till fr- Saturday. Yeah. So Friday's, Saturday is well Yeah. Friday yeah. we went out morning more of a listening mission. Took the gun and for, everything just in case. Yeah, just in case. And we went to a spot that Jacob had history on. And not much. Like, we did bump one turkey, actually. I, we, I couldn't tell if it was a hen or a gobbler. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but after that, you shot your turkey that morning. Okay, so that was the same morning. Yes. Yeah, so we okay. got to talk about your turkey. Yeah. Yeah, so so that morning, I woke up, and uh, I couldn't quite make it to hunt with, like, y'all in, in y'all's area. Mm-hmm. And so I was just going to go hunt the club. And right before I went out of town, I think we mentioned this on maybe the last podcast. Mm-hmm. Um. Right before I went out of town, I had turkey hunted the club again. And all year, the birds had been hanging out on this one ridge, and it's where I killed my first bird of the year. And all year, I've been wanting to just get in there like really, really early on that ridge because they've been – there's just one tree that we found when we were hunting with Lee. I was like, that's the tree, dude. Mm-hmm. Like, you get in there before daylight. You know, like, as soon as he hits the ground, he's, he's getting it. Yep. And uh, so I wanted to get into that spot. And I did. I walked in, and I hadn't been in there in like probably twelve days or so. And like you said, it was it was humid as crap. I mean, you walked outside <laughs> yeah. before daylight, and oh. it, you were like instantly sweating yes. before daylight. And I was like, "Oh, this isn't gonna be good." Oh yeah. And I'm like, I don't know if they're gonna gobble today, but I went anyways. And so I I sat on that ridge top, and I didn't hear a cluck. I didn't hear a tree yelp. I didn't hear a gobble. I didn't hear a wing beat. I didn't hear nothing. It was depressing. Uh, crows were starting up at like 5 a.m. Nothing. I mean, just nothing. And so I gave it to like probably about 6.15 or so. I'm like, I just want to be totally sure because I don't know. On mornings like that, I don't know if you've seen this, but on mornings like that, sometimes it seems like they just take a minute to get started and that sometimes they even fly down later. Like I'll, I'll be in, I've been in spots like that where I knew better, but I, I've gotten up like – well after light, you know, you'd think they'd be on the ground and then like one takes off from like a hundred yards away that was in a tree and you're like, crap, they haven't Especially down foggy yet. foggy days. Oh yeah, definitely. And so I was like, maybe that. And then, and then I'm like, I don't know what to do. I'm like blazing hot, you know, I got to go to work so later. So I'm like, ah, maybe I'll just go to the house. And so I, I walk back to the truck and I'm like, no, I'm going to go check out that other spot. So right before I left to go out of town about again, like 12 days before this, mm-hmm. I had gone to this area of the property where they thinned these pines, and the pines are now really good nesting cover. So they thinned them last year, and it's kind of like you were talking about, Thomas. It's like a, it's like kind of thick up top. It's like ferns and everything in there that are like knee high that a turkey can get up mm-hmm. under. And I'm like, it's good nesting cover. Mm-hmm. And last year there was a lot of turkeys in there too. So this, I guess, it goes back to like knowing your area as well. And I, I knew that they were in there last year, so I was like, maybe they're hanging out over there. Like, maybe those hens are going to nest. It's kind of getting late in the season, and these birds are – the gobblers are going to be hanging around those hens. So I go up in there, and usually I walk in one way. So there's, like, this nice road system that goes right through the top of it, and it kind of goes, and it, you know, follows these ridge tops and kind of winds through there. There's a couple logging decks, and usually I just walk in that way. But these – pines are so open that kind of like you were saying Mm -hmm. you can see so far i'm like i think i might get busted if i do that and i'm like thinking that they might be on one of these logging decks and so i come in the back way so i park like a quarter mile away and i actually drop into a bottom where normally i would have tried to i would have gone up to the logging deck and tried to call into that bottom but it was like seven or no it was probably like 6 40 at this point and i'm like well Maybe they've left the bottom and they're already up on the logging deck. So I went to the bottom and I swung up and around and basically this road comes up and it makes a 90 degree turn and it goes up to a logging deck and then it makes another 90 degree turn. And I was trying to get on the lower turn. So it wasn't ideal because I would would be trying to call them downhill if they were there, but I'm like, I'm just going to try it because it sets up pretty good with that logging deck. There's like a straightaway that goes to the other bend in the road and right at that 90 degree bend, um, you can set up and they're like 40 yards mm-hmm. if they came around the bend. And then it, when it goes to my left, it goes down to a bottom that I've also found tracks in. So I was like, I'm just going to sneak up to that. So I go sneaking up to it and I get up there and 
uh, I still haven't heard anything at all. It's still hot as crap. I'm getting eaten by mosquitoes and stuff. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm just going to sit here and just see what happens. I'm going to do some really soft calling. And I take like 10 minutes to pick out a tree. And the logging deck is 150 yards up from me. Like, it's really close. So I'm trying to be quiet. And all the trees are small. And I'm like, I don't know where I want to sit. And I end up getting like kind of back in the woods a little bit. I'm like five yards maybe off the edge of the road. And I sit up against this little sweet gum that's like got three or four little uh, trunks to it. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of en enveloping me. And I, I, it's like a good blind. I'm like, okay. And it, my shot is like a little bit obstructed to the road. Like I've got holes I can shoot through, but I kind of have to lean or like kind of get up mm -hmm. to shoot through them. But I'm like, you know, if, if he comes walking down the road, like I'm going to be able to move just a little bit. And so I, I get set up and I get on, I get on the first tree I actually set up against and I get the call out and I put the, put the peg to it and I'm about to start, uh, calling and I'm like, no, I'm going to get on that other tree. So I get all my crap together and I go get on a different tree <laughs> and I sit down again and dude, I sit there and I'm like, I'm doing like what you were talking about, just 20% volume, like very quiet, about as quiet as you can call and still sound like good, you know? Mm -hmm. And I start clucking around and purring a little bit, and I'm doing it just kind of passively for maybe like a minute and a half, two minutes, and uh, just try trying to sound like a content hen like, like Coach was talking about. Mm -hmm. And, dude, I'd probably clucked like 20-some-odd times, you know, just kind of breaking it up like, burp, 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 kind of like that. And I, at some point in there, dude, one just – cuts me off and it's on the logging deck like 150 yards mm. above me and when that happened i was like you're dead <laughs> oh, yeah <laughs> i was it's like game it's, time it's game time and so after he gobbles i cluck like four or five more times and i put the call down and i just put the gun up right there at that bend in the road and i don't know it, he gobbled at uh 658 because i when he gobbled when i'm sitting there I, I wear a watch and when i'm sitting there on my watch is on my left hand, which is my front hand on the gun. I turn my watch yes. around backwards. Uh -huh. So when I'm sitting here on the gun, I can see what time it is. I don't have to like turn my wrist. I'm, I'm like looking at my watch face. Yep. And so I'm like, okay, I'm going to give him till about 7.10 and see what he does. And that just helps me like keep track of time right. because if, if I don't, then one minute feels like five minutes. And I'm like, why isn't he here yet? <laughs> you know, so I'm like, I'm going to give him till 7.10. So he gobbled at 6.58. I'm going to give him till 710. It gets to be about 705. Crow comes over. He hammers it. And he's right there in the same spot. And then after he gobbles that crow, he gobbles like three more times on his own. I was like, yeah, buddy. I ain't giving you nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it gets to be maybe seven, close to 720. And a rooster crows at a nearby property. He hammers it. A dog barks. He hammers it. He gobbles on his own a couple more times. And I'm just like, all right, come on, dude. Like He's still up there. And so then I get the call out again, and I call even softer than before. I mean, literally as soft as I can yeah. possibly call on this thing. And uh, he might have responded to me. Uh, I can't remember if he gobbled at me, but he was gobbled on his own a good bit. And I put the call down again, and it, it's just a waiting game. And I can kind of see up to the logging deck. So again, I'm looking up this hill through the woods. And it's, he's not like 50 feet above me. Like, it's not a giant hill, but he's above me. And he can see all the way down to this 90 degree turn in the road that I'm sitting up against. And I'm like, okay, maybe I don't know if he's is going to come down, but it's like literally a straight shot from him to that. So I'm like, there's no way he's not going to walk down here. And, um, there's How like, far a, is he? he's right. like, he's about one thirty. Okay. Okay. So I, I have like a little gap through the trees where I can see up on the logging deck. I can mm -hmm. see a little bit of slash up there. And I slip my binos out, and I'm looking at it, and I'm like, okay, if he walks through that gap, I, I should definitely be able to see him. And I, I put my binos up, and I'm just sitting there, and like, I don't. It's hard for me to tell like what I'm looking at because I'm looking through so much brush, and so yeah. my depth perception is like off. And I'm literally going cross-eyed, and I'm like sitting there, <laughs> I'm like squinting real hard, and like my depth perception is like yeah. making me dizzy, dude. And so I like kind of do my eyes like that, kind of shake my head a little bit. And I'm like looking up there. And when I do that, I look back up there and I just see something red in that gap. I was like, well, that's gotta be him, but I can't tell what it is. Cause he's like 130 yards naked. eye. I'm like, is that a Turkey head? And then it goes like, pow, like oh, right there in front yeah. of me. I was like, Oh, there he is. So he stands up there and then his body comes into full view and he's just like doing, I mean, he's doing the thing. He's like looking and he gobbles like seven times right there. I was like, dude, you got to walk down here. 
come on. And I pretty much completely shut up at that point. I'm like, I'm not going to give him anything else at all. Either he's going to drift off and I'm going to reposition or he's going to come down here and I'm going to get him. And it gets to be about 7.45 or so, uh, close to 7.50. And I hear a yelp come from up there. I'm like, oh, crap. Like, it's a freaking hen. And so as soon as I hear that yelp, I grab the call again and I just cluck a what couple more times. Ceramic. So I'm running the ceramic call and I I just yelp back at that turkey, like real quiet still, like being very quiet. Yelp back, put the call back down. And I like I'm looking back up at that gap and I feel like I can see movement, but there's nothing like in the gap. And I'm like, okay, what is this? So I slip the binos out. I'm like, is that a hen? And I look, I look up there through my binos and it's again like my depth perception. Like it was kind of hard to tell what I was looking at. But basically what it was is I was looking over the top of the road and the logging deck is like way up here, but the road came down right below it and I was seeing into that little sway right there and I see a red head walking straight at me and I'm like, is he just on the logging deck or is he on the road? And when, so I'm looking up there and I can see the, the, the bend of the road right here where it comes around to me just right out of the corner of the binos and as I'm looking at this gobbler walking to me, I catch movement right there and my heart was like, oh crap. Because my gun is like up under my armpit in my lap, and uh, I see slacking. I see movement right there, and there's a, a decent sized pine, like maybe a ten inch pine between me and him, but that's only like ten yards in front of me, so it's not really ideal to get movement behind because you want it to be closer to them than you. And uh, so I kind of like lean just a little bit, and I just see a fan come up, and he comes up over the side of that oh. a- around the bend in the road, and I'm like, oh crap. And I like ease my binos back down in there and he walks out, I mean, in the wide open, full strut, red, white, and blue, freaking beard swinging and, and he's in full strut. So I'm like, well, this isn't good. And at first I'm like kind of cussing myself. I'm like, you're about to screw this up. And he's like, he's walking straight to me and right in that little gap, about halfway between me and him, there's a pine limb that, that kind of hangs down in the road. And he got behind that limb, still walking to me. And I can still see him, but he's pretty obstructed. So I just like as slow as I possibly can, I just get the get the butt of the gun out from under my armpit. And I'm I'm like kind of holding the gun down like this. And I'm thinking like, okay, what do I need to do here? Cause I don't want to jerk up on him and spook him. And after thinking about it, you know, I didn't want him to get out of my gap either. Cause I could have shot through this other stuff, but the margin of error would not have been in my favor because I had it was several kind of bigger saplings. But they were like right in front of me. And I'm like, if I catch the, I've done that before. I catch the edge of one of those, like, I'm not getting him. And if I could sneak it through, I'd get him. But, you know, it's just, I don't want to take that chance. I want to shoot him when he's in the big gap. And so this is just, this is like, we actually talk about this sometimes. And I do this on deer all the time, but I've never actually done this on a turkey. No. (laughs) He's walking to me and he's about to come out from behind the pine limb. And I'm like, I'm going to wait until he's out in the wide open and wait till he's walking straight at me, and then I'm just going to raise up and shoot him. And the reason I wanted to do that is because, one, I didn't want to wait till he turned and was facing away because if he caught me moving, then... Pitch. Yeah, he'll just pitch and run off. If he's walking straight at me and he catches movement, he's a lot more likely to just kind of sit there and look because he's looking right at you. I almost feel like it freaks him out a little bit more when they catch movement behind him. Or on their side. But that... But also, if he wants to, if he does want to run away when I'm raising my gun up, then he's still got to turn around and I get an extra quarter second or half second, whatever it is. And so he gets out in, that, in the wide open and I just, I mean, I don't jerk the gun up, but just slow and smooth, just like mount the gun, settle my cheek, put the red dot on him. And he's still on half strut. Like, I think he saw me, but he kind of comes out of strut a little bit and he just stands there. And I was like, I settled it on his waddles. I was like, here we go. Boom. And about that, to ride the lightning. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And and dude, I got I tore out of that little thicket so fast. I mean, dude, I wish someone click it, dude. It's like when you're running really fast and you can like hear your your feet hitting the ground. I was like, you know, yeah. and I could feel the window. I mean, dude, I ran so fast at that turkey. And I get up there and he's just laying there. He wasn't even flopping. And I get there and I look up and two long beards are running off and there was three of them. So I'd seen one of his buddies and I think actually it was one of his buddies that had yelped. Uh, Cause in the, in the moment I was like, Oh crap, it's a hen. But when I thought back on it, it was like a, it sounded like a gobbler yelp and, and yeah, dude got him second bird of the year. Any, any takeaways from that hunt? <sighs> Man, it's just like, it's pretty, 
it, for me at least, it's been pretty rare that I have a bird cut me off when I'm calling that quietly. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it's only happened probably twice, and I killed both of them. And they were both like nice turkeys. And the other takeaway is like, you know, just because they're uphill doesn't mean that you can't call them to where you're at. Because that's the thing you always hear is, oh, they're uphill. Like the turkey doesn't want to walk downhill. Well, you know, he was on the logging deck. So there, there's a couple things to it. One, it was being familiar with the area. Like you got to be familiar with your area uh, and know where the turkeys like to hang out. And two, acting as though there is a turkey there when you don't know that there is one. Uh, that goes back to the having confidence in the spot, kind of like y'all were talking about with your hunts. Mm-hmm. Like I knew they liked to be in here. And it's like I didn't know that they were up there. They didn't gobble. They didn't give me any indication that they were there. But I'm like based on what I know about the area and just what I know about turkeys, there's a good chance there's one up there. So let me just sneak in here, and I'm going to act as though there is one there, mm-hmm. and I'm because I I've got the confidence that there is, mm-hmm. and and just you know having faith in the spot too, like calling them to me, like that bend in the road. You know, it's not ideal calling them downhill like that, but the setup was good enough where I'm like he he's not going to hang up. Like he's either going to come or he's not. Yeah, you yeah. Know? I think Thomas is going to Thomas got that takeaway from this third bird we yeah. killed. Because I could tell he was getting frustrated with me. <laughs> and dude, cause we were moving slow. I'm talking, I moved real slow. Like I wasn't that frustrated. I could tell. Down. Listen, talk, he, you were a lot the better. The first hunt, I was more frustrated than, like, <clears throat> the third hunt spot, I was confident, you know, we'll get more into it. Yeah. But uh, um, So, before we go into the third turkey, Thomas, I do want to ask, the first two birds that you killed, do you have any takeaways that you learned again as like the first one you killed ever, first turkey you've ever killed, and the second turkey again, two acting completely different. Was there any like takeaways now thinking about like you know at some point when you fledge those you know you fledge those wings a little Get bit, out file, of file the, the nest and uh, <laughs> you know hunt on your own, call your own turkeys in. You yeah. know what? what any good lessons you learned? I mean, l- the main lessons I kind of already hit on on like for turkey hunting especially. Deer hunting, yes, you need confidence in a spot, but turkey hunting, when a lot of turkey hunting is more of hearing, I would say, from my experiences so far, listening to the birds' movement and pinning them where you think that you heard them. Like, it's a lot of it's confidence and having that mindset that you're either going to go into this area and sit until one o'clock when time closes, or, you know, putting yourself in a higher percent chance of killing that bird you know turkey hunting is a lot of percent games you know between where you're setting up setting up to where you won't spook them when you call when you don't call it's a basically like everything's a percentage like how you said mm -hmm. when you're trying to shoot the turkey should i shoot him in front or should i wait till he you know is heading away and not trying to spook him yeah yeah that's just man yeah that's just spooking a lot of turkeys over the years Playing the odds in your favor. Yeah, see, Thomas is doing something that I don't have any experience with, which is killing the first turkeys he ever shoots at. Because <laughs> I think I missed 11 before I actually killed one. Yeah. 11? I think so. That's insane. You missed 11? <laughs> That's insane. I think so. I need to go back and count them all. Are you serious? I think so. Whoa! He was just spraying I back think, in the day. I think it's double digits. I'm pretty sure. Are you, you sure missed you, 11 are, are you turkeys sure? before you killed one? I'm pretty sure. Are you sure you didn't Whoa. have slugs in? Huh? Are you sure you didn't have slugs in? <laughs> no, 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 I did not. That's like, what are you shooting at them with? Yeah. Rat shot? <laughs> like, dude. Well, that's what, that's what number nines are. That's that's rat shot. Well. It's just, you know, one's lead, one's TSS. So. How many have you missed with me? You missed. Oh, I'm trying to remember. I, I can I can remember quite a few. <laughs> Look, I, try, I tried calling in Jacob a bunch of first turkeys, and, and he freaking screwed the pooch on all of Every them. One so of when them. did you shoot your first turkey? It was in it, South Carolina. North Carolina. North Carolina. Yep. And you already knew each other, though? Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. we were doing okay. The podcast is already going. Yeah, yeah we, that was the first year of the podcast. Yeah, that was 2018. Uh, he hammered a Jake. Yeah. A, <laughs> came in goblin. Full, I think. Yeah. What 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 did full, jo- yeah had full fan? What did Josh Holly say when we interviewed him? He's like, "You gonna talk like a man? I'm gonna treat you like a man." Oh. <laughs> he came yeah. in goblin, came in goblin, strutting. You could never see his beard because all the cover came through. And we doubled me and our buddy Greg. Oh, we, you just shot a Jake, anyways. But probably, but like came in goblin, strutting. We literally both thought we just shot long beards, and dude, we went. They went to flopping. We went to running. I broke my lunchbox call, and dude, we get over there and like 
I'd get on one. The other ones, I mean, like legit flop, not running off, but like flopping and covering some ground with his wing beats. And Greg about tackles that turkey. <laughs> and he, we bring him back and he's like, he holds the bird up. He's like, you shoot a Jake? I'm like, I pull this one up. Did you shoot a Jake? And I'm like, we both shot Jake. I'm like, are you kidding me, man? You and were then, hoping one of them with long birds so you could claim it. I mean, long beard. Long, long birds. Long bird. All right, THP. <laughs> and then was your next... Was your first long beard last year? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So he killed. Yep. He killed. Look, Jacob's progressing quickly. Yeah. Well, maybe a lot of the listeners don't know that Jacob. Yep. Jacob is uh, still pretty new oh, at yeah. this. But hey, this is the this is the power of a uh, of being able to interview such great woodsmen. And, honestly, and actually take it and apply it. Yeah, and but, take but it see, and apply but see, it. A lot. Yeah. Of, I think a lot of things that ha- helped me. It wasn't like like last year or two was the first time I ever turkey hunted. It's like mm-hmm. turkey hunted for like seven eight years or lo- really longer than that, counting back all the way to high school. But it's, you failed so many times, kind of going back, like, I know now, after talking like a guy like Ron, Coach Ron, like, that was the most impactful interview we've ever done for yeah, me. Yeah, 100%. And it's like, I took what he said, and instantly was like, bird, bird, bird. Because I could get on birds. I could call birds. But it was always like, they'd hang out, they'd, or they'd hang up, I wouldn't have enough patience, but I'd bust them, something would happen, something yeah. stupid. And it's like after having that interview, I I went back and like just mentally processed like all the birds I've missed or didn't ever get a shot at or never even saw. And like they came in, but I never could see them or whatever. Yeah. And it's like I know exactly what I did wrong. Yeah. And well, and two also, which I know we got to get to these other turkeys, but also, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but I would say that you really didn't change anything major. It was like you you kind of learned the basics. You learned how to find turkeys. And then all the adjustments after that were like tweaks. Like you were just changing like little things here and there. It's yeah. like, oh, I shouldn't have walked that extra 10 yards like, or, oh, I shouldn't have called that loud or, oh, I shouldn't have listened from that spot. Mm-hmm. And it's like little minor adjustments actually ended up making the big difference. Yeah, it wasn't anything. I mean, the biggest adjustment was his volume of calling. Yeah. And also not having confidence in specific calls. Like, again, I, I can yelp on a mouth call. Cannot purr in a mouth call. I will choke and die, <laughs> and my tongue will fall off from the vibrate. I can't do it. I can cluck on a mouth call, but it's like, you know, I killed uh, that long beard on public second day of season last year with mouth call, and it, it, it worked fine. But like, one thing I've realized this year is like in those high pressure situations, because it happened to me very early in the season. High pressure situations, I can't control my airflow with a mouth call. I can't do it. <laughs> like it's like. Yeah. It's a squ- It's bad. Like I can't. Like there's so much tense. Like, I'm so tensed up. You know, birds gobbling or whatever. So I'm like, I'm just not even gonna deal with mouth call. Like, and we interviewed some guys this year that don't really even use mouth calls a whole yeah. bunch. Like Wayne Lackey was like, I've I've killed birds with them, but like it's mm-hmm. not my go-to. Like I'd rather use a friction call. So yeah, that, and that was one thing for me this year. I've always used mouth calls, mm-hmm. but this year I wanted to get more comfortable with friction calls because like I can call pretty good on a mouth call, but I'm not the best at controlling volume. So I kind of have like one volume, mm-hmm. or I can get really really loud, but my starting volume, like I can't get it as quiet as I can get, especially my slate call. Yeah. Like if I want to go really quiet, the slate call is it for me. Uh, and then the, the next one up is a ceramic, and then if I want to be really loud, I'll use a crystal. But, uh, yeah. but yeah, so like I went into this season where I'm like, I'm going to force myself to use my friction calls a lot more and kill turkeys with those. And now I have so much confidence in friction me calls. Me too. Like, I, I absolutely so me much. too. Because like, to me, the thing about friction call, and I, 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 I'll bring this point up. Most people are like, well, you can't run it when the turkey's right there in front of you. If you set up correctly, if you can see the turkey, kill the turkey. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, we've had, me and Thomas have had some hunts. Couple, like a couple of his hunts. Most of my, all, all my birds when I finally saw them, they were well within gun range. Okay. Yeah. Thomas's, we've had, and none of my turkeys really put on a show. I didn't have, I didn't shoot a single one that came in strutting. I mean, the last one, he strutted, but he was behind some trees and stuff. And then I shot him. You know, he dropped strut, you know, he was gobbling, but he dropped shut when I sh- shot him. Thomas birds, I was like, his last bird, which we'll talk about, I was like, do not shoot him in strut. Don't do it. Like, wait until he'll, he'll drop strut. If I got a cluck or something, make him get him out of strut, I'll do it. But like, don't shoot him in yeah. full strut. Don't blow his fan into pieces. Um, and also, it's like their neck, like they're just like you can't see half their freaking neck because they have it all pushed back in the feathers. Yeah. But all of Thomas's birds, for the most part, put on a freaking show. Oh, I think yeah. three of them came in strutting. And then the one that didn't come in strutting, he was hammering the 
Yeah, like we, he was probably struck right over the ridge. Like right when I heard him spitting drum, he straight drop struck, came over the ridge, and he hammered him. That's awesome. Him. Yeah, I feel like the nature of how we hunt a lot of times, we don't get that show. At least, I, at least I don't. Like yeah, most of the last bird, like the last probably five turkeys I've killed mm-hmm. were like periscope or they just come walking in you know not doing anything fancy this the last one i killed last friday Mm -hmm. he was the first turkey that i've killed walking and strutting in in years yeah you know like even the first one i killed this year dude he just periscoped like i could just see his beard and up Mm -hmm. when he like looked over the ridge and so i could barely even see him when i shot him but this one dude yeah he came in puffed up looking good i was like oh this is i needed this yeah that is is one of the coolest feelings it it is man bro and so listen this third bird i'm talking about picture i wish let's talk about the third bird all right so let's go to friday so so, yeah we gotta go go back to friday friday scouting mission till around eight ish yeah and then he bounces goes with you y'all do podcasts or take some photos i go back into town have some calls And then I go back after um, to scout this area that I've seen on the map um, pretty close to where Jacob's shot birds or heard birds from. We're not going to give too many details, by the way. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Okay, keep going. Anyways, and uh, so I go and scout this in the afternoon um, to try to find... Because on the map, you know, it looks good. It kind of looks at some of the areas, but... um, We'll say this. It had been burned. Yeah. At, at some point in the past. Yep. And then, and you, for what, yeah, you're like, it just looks good on the map. And I agreed. I was like, man, it does look good. I mean, it's it, just like the terrain looks like a lot of the stuff we've hunted, even in Arkansas, right? Yeah. Arkansas and Alabama for turkey. So I had a lot of confidence just looking on the map. So I was like, I'm going to go in here and try to find some sign um, so we can go hunt on Saturday morning. So I start walking and I get maybe. 40 yards from the gate there's no people sign there's there's some old tire tracks that is from someone like who has a key to get back in there but no people sign no boot tracks really anything mm-hmm. i get 40 different, yards we had to go to a different piece of public too yeah because you tagged out in one in alabama you can kill two birds per piece of public land yep so i start walking down and there's a hen track i'm like sweet love it walking more gobbler tracks and this whole road is just torn up with it's probably the same two birds but it was a hen and a gobbler i mean you could see them they're working back and forth and we just had a rain so that was on friday so we had rain on wednesday wednesday yeah or wednesday night i think right yeah wednesday night so i knew they were either in there that morning or the on thursday Mm -hmm. so i start walking and i follow this this road goes up to the kind of the top of a ridge not really and then uh, does a T, and there's turkey tracks on this side of the T, and turkey tracks on this side of the T, um, left and right. So I leave. And I'm like Jacob, we're going in here. It looks good. Um, hardwood bottoms on each side. It's kind of select cut pines. Um, that's probably, you know, a foot to anywhere from a foot to two and a half feet of um, vegetation vegetation right mm-hmm. so i leave and then saturday we make a game plan to walk in there and there's a couple of access gates that people could walk up on us at so our game plan was to park at both and then he drive us back to the actual main gate and we walk up through this listening point so we get set up probably huh. how early we wake up that morning because this is a funny story you're, you're bypassing some of the best parts of this hunt was this the so, one where? Yeah, so okay. I, I, told Tom, I told Thomas we're waking up at one. I'm waking up at one forty-five because we had a long drive. We got to be up at one forty-five, and we got to get there, and we got to get there before you know, get there at a good time before most people are gonna be showing up. Okay. Yeah. So I get there. We're gonna meet in this. We're gonna meet at this one area. We're gonna meet at this one destination at two thirty to meet up, and then he's gonna follow me all the way over to the public. Okay. Yeah. At two thirty, I, I get there at two twenty-five. Two thirty, he, he's not there, and we had met in that area previously. Um, and he, you know, he he always seemed to beat me there by a couple minutes. Two thirty five happens, he's not there. I'm, I start calling him. I call, and I have and I, it rings, it rings, it rings, goes the voicemail. Okay, hold on. And I'm like, ain't no way. Call him again. Rings, 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 goes the voicemail, and I'm like, this sucker's asleep. I keep calling, I keep calling. I called probably four or five times. Finally, fifth time, and I texted him. I was like, you awake? 
I call him again. He answers. And he like answers and I can tell. I was like, freaking out. Yeah, I can tell. <laughs> I thought it was like five. <laughs> and dude, I, I call and he answers and he's like, hello? I'm like, you're still asleep, aren't you? You just woke up. He's like, dude, I don't know what happened, man. I, I tur- Okay, so the night before, I because we woke up the day before, I was like, I'm going to have to, I turned on my ringer. Thank God I turned on my ringer. I set two alarms at 145 and like 150. And I, and I go sleep and I wake up to my phone ringing. I'm like, dude, I never heard my alarm or anything. And the, after he, I answered, I was like, holy crap. I, I changed so <laughs> fast to get in the car and go. But after I hung up, my alarm was still going off. So I guess I was just sleeping so hard. That like no noise was gonna wake me up. Oh my god! I bet Jacob. I bet you were he's pissed. I bet you were mad because he because he's tagged out. I'm yeah. like I can't do it. I'm not. I'm not gonna just go drive all the way over and just listen. Like I'm not gonna waste my time if he can't yeah. go. So, I, but I make it to the so, gate. Well, so we I go to the gate I, again. Get there at a pretty good time, and he got. I'm like I don't know how fast dude was driving. Because <laughs> I'm thinking I'm thinking it's gonna be like. You know, five a like five a.m. five thirty before he gets there, and he got there. I'll just say he got there early, and uh, somehow made it. And you know, he gets there. I, I'm like, thank God, dude. Like, you know, we're here because I'm like, you know, you just found the sign. If you found the sign. Like, there's gotta be, there's gotta be, gol- there's gonna be golfers in here. Like, we should hear something. It's gonna be a pretty good morning. End up dropping him or he goes to his spot to park the car. I go pick him up, come back to the main gate. We walk in, and. You know, you had a listening spot. And originally, you're like, man, let's separate. I'm like, dude, let's just sit right here together because, like, I don't know how good sales service is, and I want to walk off, and I got a bird burning it up, and I can't get a hold of you, and then you go wander off some other place, and then I can't get a hold of you, and I don't see you back till 1 o'clock. So, anyway, but, yeah, we, we walked up, and you had a, kind of a, an area we kind of had pinned that you wanted to sit on a little high spot. And- mm-hmm. It was almost, like, right at that that T, but we set up. It uh, gets daylight, 5 or gray light 515 mm-hmm. we sit there nothing until probably that 530 mark 535 something like that yeah and he hears one um pretty far i didn't i didn't hear it the, initially yeah and then i'm sitting there and i'm listening in that direction and then he was probably facing away from us because mm-hmm. when he turned around i guess up in his in the roost i heard it clear like i was like oh yeah i hear it so we sit there. He gobbles probably five, six more times, and we're like, All right, "Let's go after him," because no other birds closer were gobbling. Yeah. So we pack it up and we start, you know, working down that logging road towards him, and we were kind of like, I don't know if we were confused on like the sound of him or what happened. This has happened twice, Hunter but Thomas. at some times, like when he gobbled, we were like, "Oh my god, he's like." 150 yards right here at this at the bend of the road and this is that almost fly down or they might have already flown down yep. and then then he would gobble and it was like oh dude he's 600 yards from us so and, and, and it's like i don't know if there was birds so i thought about this i didn't know if there was birds almost in line with us where one was closer and one was further and they'd be gobbling alternately but it was like drastic difference yeah, between yeah. the gobbles and because we thought they were like roosted right off the logging road, and yeah. we get over there, I thought we made pretty good time. And next time, I don't know if this dude had afterburners on or what. <laughs> he just kept going. He was just one of these ridge runners, which I haven't ran into a bunch of those birds this year. Like just turkeys that get down and they just want to. That they are, they have a very specific spot they're going to, and they are moving there very quickly. Yeah, yeah. And that's what he was doing. It was like I like we cover like you know we probably when we first heard him, he's probably four hundred yards, four hundred fifty yards from us, and we walked four hundred. And then he's still. 350 yards out in front of us. And yeah. I'm like, God, dude. But the like, reason why I think it could have been another bird is because mm-hmm. where we were hunting is, like, you have that ridge top, mm-hmm. right? And all these points that are coming down, yeah. those bottoms that we've seen all the, that sign in, mm-hmm. there's those bottoms, like, every couple hundred yards um, going towards where he was going. So I could definitely see one roosted closer Yeah, we might have walked us. past a bird that shut up and then yeah. kept chasing this one that just kept gobbling. Yeah. But yeah, he probably did. Yeah, I, I told Thomas that too. I was like, I think we might have walked past one because I thought one when one gobbled right before we moved, one gobbled. And I'm like, I don't think that bird's that far. I think he's like 250, 300 from us. And uh, but anyway, so we make it down and we get down to a uh, like this this little knob. We get we get up on this knob and he's gobbling, he's gobbling, he's gobbling. And I'm like, I, I think did I call at that point? 
I think I called before we ever set up, and he answered again some like meat like medium volume yelps. Uh, I was thinking this bird's three hundred yards from us, so I, you know, forty five maybe fifty percent volume yelps, and then some clucks, and he answered. And I'm like, I think we're just gonna kill kill this bird. I mean, he he is acting like the second turkey we killed, yeah, you know, like just gobbling. And I'm like, but he's just moving so far so fast. So we go get set up, actually in the logging road, this little bit of the logging road. We get set up, and I start calling, and he's answering. And then he'd stop, and I'm like, I think he's coming. So I'm like, shut up. Nothing happened. And then one. Yeah, then we had one gobble. Like he he gobbled me one more time in front of us on this little ridge point, and one now gobbles like way down here to our left, down this holler. And I'm like, are they? I'm like, maybe this dude's circling us. And all of a sudden, that one across on this ridge point out in front of us. Again, he's probably 200 yards from us, 200. 50 yards, he just starts gobbling, gobbling, gobbling. I'm like, we got to kill this bird. I'm like, I'm about to tr- do something a little bit different from what I've done and uh, try and go Shane Parker on him, try to yo-yo him. So I start calling kind of loud, louder, again, louder than I've been calling, probably get 50, 60% volume. He answers, and I start walking. I told Thomas, I'm going to walk away, walk way back up this log and try you know, lead, get out 100, 150 yards calling and slowly get quieter and to see what he does. I do it. As I'm walking back, the turkey gets close. I'm, I'm listening to him gobbling as I'm calling. Like I, I'm just calling almost the whole time, and I can gobble, gobble, gobble. Mm-hmm. And at some point, I get to the back of that top of that knob, and he gobbles. And I'm like, "You're waiting for a gunshot?" Yeah. I'm like, "Well, actually, when this happened, I told Thomas to move up, and he actually moved up and got some pines a little bit closer to where this bird is at. He moved up maybe 65 yards, 70 yards, and he gobbled. And I'm like." Kill him. I, I shut up. I'm like, kill the bird. Kill him. Shoot him. Shoot him. <laughs> and he's still like 120 yards from me. Yeah. Well, oh. it, it, dude, it's yeah, like I never saw the bird. Th- this turkey, I'm talking about one of the hardest goblin birds. I mean, like the loudest mm-hmm. that I've hunted all se- that we've hunted all season. And he got out like he's gotta be in front of Thomas, like 30 yards, dude. Like, <laughs> kill the bird. And nothing happens. And then all of a sudden Thomas calls me and he's like, Hey, are you calling? And I'm like, I stopped. But I was like, yeah, I've been calling. He's like, I can't hear you. I'm like, the turkey's answering. Every time I'm calling, the turkey's cutting me off. And uh, he's like, I'm like, how far is he? He's like, he's he's still like 120, 130 yards. I can't make a move on him. And uh, I'm like, all right, well, let me try something. So I hung up with him, and I started cutting. I'm like, let's just see. Like, this turkey's acting pretty hot, but, like, you know, I'm not calling super heavy. I'm going to cut this turkey. I start cutting at him. He's like, pa 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 as I'm cutting. pop 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 He was double gobbling. Yeah, and I'm like, shut up. He'd gobble, 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 and then nothing would happen. Five, ten minutes goes by. And finally, I'm like, I text Thomas. I'm like, I'm just coming back to you. Like, we're going to have to, like, reposition on this yeah. Like, he just doesn't want to come back this direction. And we get down there. And he's right over this point, like this across this point, and the woods are like pretty open right there. I'm like, when he gobbles again, if he sounds like he's off that point, we're running up to him, like quietly, but we're going to run up to him and try to get where we can shoot that crest, that ridge point before yeah. it drops off. So he gobbles and he kind of like, he's kind of off the edge again. I'm like, let's go, like, you know, let's ease over there. So we, we go over there, get set up again on the logging road, and because uh, it's kind of thick off the logging road a little bit, get on the logging road, and I'm sitting. I, I sit down kind of lower, a little bit lower in elevation. The ridge point kind of like, it kind of drops down like a little saddle and goes back up on that point. I sit down kind of in the low spot. Thomas, I'm like, Thomas, get up another 20 yards. And he like crawled up there, got set up in this little pine tree. And I start calling, start calling, and nothing for like a minute. And I call again and start clucking. Now, this is why I'm going real soft, like soft clucking, purring. One gobbles, and he is off the ridge point, kind of down the creek bottom. I'm like, oh, he moved off the point. We're going to go kill this bird. Like, we're going to get back to where he was at. Set up and call him back up here. And I'm like, let's go, let's go, let's go. Dude, we go. At this point, we were not ninjas. This is like se- <laughs> this is like 730. You're yeah. just busting through yeah. the woods. No, well, just busting through the logger. I mean, we were quiet, but I'm like, yeah. let's, let's, let's quickly, let's get up there. Yeah. We don't go 20 yards from where Thomas is, and a turkey flies off the point. Yeah. <laughs> and it was not. Like, the- I look up as I'm walking, and I just see bird flying <laughs> straight Gobbler, away. Go, and he like he like goes down the bottom, flies off, hits the bottom. And I'm like, okay, the turkey we just heard gobble was not that turkey. Mm. Was not that turkey. Because he was probably 70 yards from Thomas, probably. Uh, the one that I saw fly? Yeah, 70, 80 yards. Uh-huh. Is it closer or farther? Farther. Okay. Because like I said, I told you that. I never, like, when I saw him. It was in the air. He was like, like probably like 10 feet in the air. Okay. Oh, man. Like well, off that that drop yeah. like he was already and he kind of went down yeah and he was going straight down and to that bottom what's that, that feeling you just i was like well at first well, 
we looked at each other, and I'll tell you this. Me and Jacob, and he said this already, it's really nice having someone, especially a brother or someone that you can actually say something or a close friend, mm-hmm. especially when you're turkey hunting, like you bounce suck. ideas at each other. Or be like, quit doing that. Yeah. You're stupid. Yeah. <laughs> and like, we looked at each other after that, and we were just like, dude, like, in our heads, I'm almost positive. We're like, why did we just do that? Yeah. We're like, <laughs> oh, like yeah. someone should have stepped terrible. up. I felt terrible, but I'm like, I don't think it's the same bird. And I was like, probably the same bird. Let's no, that's up. what I said too. Yeah. I, he said that. I was like, dude, that's definitely the bird. Yeah, like, <laughs> so we, we set up right there by where we bumped him at and like called uh, it and like nothing happened. Yeah. And Desperation. Like, we sat there for like 30 minutes and I'm like, that was 100% the bird. Yeah. <laughs> like, no doubt. Because like, that's 100% the bird. And I told I apologize after all my day. That was on me. Like that was a terrible like, decision. And not like he already just put me on two birds. Dude, were you were you like, I'm getting a new guy? You yeah. Suck. Dang it. His <laughs> rates are too high. He's yeah. bumping birds. You just cut your tip in half, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, all I got was lunch out of these places and freaking wasn't even anything overly nice either. Oh, yeah, Thomas, you got you better take him out to like Perry's or something. Yeah, go get some steak. Yeah. Every time we Where that Perry's pork chop at? Yeah. Birmingham people know what we're talking about. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. But so that so that happens. I'm like, well, hey, <laughs> hey Chick Fil first bird we went to Chick Fil A. He got two biscuits <laughs> and a combo. <laughs> okay, wait, yeah. you got two biscuits? No, that was second a, bird. No, like and a, biscuit. a combo no. meal. You got three meals? <laughs> no. <laughs> One combo meal in a bit. I was about to say, yeah. bro, I thought we were cutting. Dang up. You're celebrating on that one. Yeah, that was that <laughs> so, was the awesome one. But, but any, so going back, I, I so we heard that one bird gobble like down off the point, like wasn't the same bird, it was that like, down the bottom. Like, we're gonna swing around and he's like either on that next ridge next to us or he's like further down the bottom, but he's somewhere in that area. Let's swing around him from up top and kind of come around the backside of his point and try to, you know, call him up. And this is at like 750. Yeah. Like okay. we, we bumped that bird like right before eight. We bumped at 730, I think, on the dot. Okay. I texted Greg right when it happened. Oh. Uh, cause he, Greg texted me. He's like, cause we killed one Wednesday. You know, I told him we were going to go hunt uh, Saturday or yeah, on Saturday. He's like, is he dead yet? And I'm like, I, I just like, we just bumped one at 730. And, Anyways, so we did this big loop, and we had to, like, ease our way around and come in on the backside of the ridge. And this is why I, I could tell Thomas was getting a little ticked off, okay? Because mm. we were moving. I don't think I was ticked I off. Could, I could tell by his emotion. He was just like, mm. he feels good now because he ended up getting shooting a bird. But I'm, like, watching his body language, and he just, like, I'm like, we're, like, dude, I walk He's so. He's, like, walking around kicking Dude, I try guns. to walk so quiet and slow. and just I had like, shit, dude. <laughs> Yeah, that was that hunt, dude. Come on now. <laughs> What's that t- time stamp? Yeah, I, I, I got it. He okay. got it. Anyway, so mark we, that. So we <laughs> we 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 cross across the. Now creek. I gotta go find that word and bleep it. Golly, Tom. Yeah, so, dude. You're just giving me more work. But anyways, we get on. We get up at the base of that next ridge on the back, like the <laughs> high side of that next ridge, and I'm like, it's thick, dude. Like it is nor. It's like. It's, I mean, stuff's like deer hunt thick. Like, not briars, really, but just like saplings and crap 12 feet tall. And I'm like, well, I know he's not going to be up on this stuff, but if we can find, like, a little low spot to get around all this and, like, come around the edge of his point. Mm-hmm. Like, we thought, I thought he was on the right side of this big point. Let's swing around the left side and kind of, you know, wrap and call him over the point and kill him. So, I walk up there. I'm like, let me go see what this looks like. And I walk up and I see like this is subtle ditch. Like I, I see an onyx. There's like a subtle ditch on the point. They kind of like split the point in half almost. And I'm like, I walk up. I'm like, I think we can walk down this. Like there was some stuff there, but like we can kind of take our time. It also rained on us that morning. Forgot to mention that. Yeah. So I think I, I saw other people on Facebook that said they get rained out. We get wet. We get wet. And then now all this stuff's wet. Sun's not really coming out yet, but starting to steam us a little bit. Oh, yeah. I was hunting that morning, too. And, yeah, it rained on us until, like, 7.30. I was hunting with Sam and Blake. Yeah. And uh, I was just sitting there thinking. I looked at the forecast, and I saw the sun was coming out at 8.30. I'm like, we're about to get steamed like a bunch of crab legs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is exactly yeah. what happened. Yeah. Yep. So that's the time when we're making a move on the, se- the second bird. Um, so, we, anyways, we go through. We get through all this stuff, and it's, like, not fun walking through. Like, there's blow downs and just thick and just soaking wet t- it's, everything's dripping on you. you you brush i mean pants are soaked shirts soaked everything's soaked yep and i'm like i told tom i'm like we're gonna go super like it, there was times i could tell this is what i was saying was frustrating like he, he want to speed up like kind of walk faster i'm like take our time ease our way through like we're, this might take us an hour to get in position on this bird but like we're gonna get there without him knowing we're there yeah like we're not gonna call to him in this thick crap we're gonna wait we get through it we pop out I'm like, this looks real good. That point kind of comes down, or part of the point. And I'm like, let's set up right here, call. We set up. 
sit maybe 20 minutes, no responses. You could hear stuff. If, if someone was walking, there's ladies and pine straw. I'm like, we could hear something walking, never, never heard anything. And uh, we get up to move, and then Thomas breaks the news to me. He's like, dude, I've got to take a dump. <laughs> That's not the word he used, but he's like, you know, he's like, I got to take a dump. And I'm like, you bring toilet paper? No. I'm like, you're lucky I've got some. The guy, dude. Dude, so I, and he you even, should have charged him by the square. Yeah, dude, listen, dollar <laughs> fifty a square, baby. <laughs> and you know what was real nice? So he gave me the little. He has it in a Ziploc bag, and he 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 took it out like it was like, oh yeah, like I'm this guy. He took out a dude wipe, and he was like, I got you a dude wipe. <laughs> Pre-packaged, you know? Pre-packaged. Oh, the little, like, yeah, individuals? Yeah, yeah. Game changer. Yep. So, Game changer. Anyways, Keep t- a couple of those in your turkey vest. So do yourself a favor. I give, I get all the time. So he, you know, does, does his thing, comes back, <laughs> and we kind of ease up. And we start – now we're coming up the back side of that ridge point that I think that one turkey was on. Kind of work up through there. and we do. I mean, we are taking our time. Like it, I don't think people realize – if I try to explain we're going slow, we're going slow. Like, I'm taught – I call it baby steps. Mm-hmm. Like you take a regular step, you know, you, you might cover, you know, I don't have super long legs, but like one step, if I'm not trying to move quickly, I'm just walking, you might cover, you know, a couple of feet maybe. I'm talking like heel to toe baby steps, just like slowly. And like every, every foot placement is like, is planned out ahead of time. Okay. Yep. Like you're looking for everything. You're filling with your boot for sticks and stuff, trying not to crack sticks. And we ease up the backside of this point. I mean, it takes us a while, but we ease up the backside of the point. I keep picking out trees, but I'm like, oh, okay, once we get to that tree, I'm like, I don't like that tree. Finally get to the very top of that point, and we get up there. I'm like, okay, this looks pretty good. There's another old logging road that cuts down, like old logging road. And um, I'm like, let's set up right here. This big oak tree. Let's set up right here. We've got the drainage that was between us and where we bumped the turkey on the other ridge point, and that gobble, gobble somewhere right here in this general area. And let's set up. So we set up. I start doing some soft calling, and we've probably been there for like maybe 10 minutes. No answers, nothing. All of a sudden, we hear this god awful like gobble right behind us. I'm like, was that a go- like, that was a gobble? And he was like, yeah. I was like, that was a gobble. It was like real choppy. And I'm like, man, I think it's a hint. I think it was a, a, a Jake. And then all of a sudden, we hear like clucking, real loud clucking, pop, pop. Uh, not not cutting, but like pop, 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 mm-hmm. pop. And then and then gobble. Yeah. And then I was like, I'm like, dude, I'm like. And then all of a sudden, we hear fighting purse. <laughs> Just like never can hear him flog or anything, but I'm like, man, that's gotta be like some Jake's fighting or Jake and a Galber fighting or something. They were, they were like, it sounded like they were on a ridge, but ended up they were being kind of down the bottom a little bit. And uh, they kept doing that, so I start calling I'm like Thomas. You need to spin around. Like I think it may be like this happened to me early in the season where I, I thought it was Jake's like Jake gobble and they're fighting purrs and all that stuff, and ended up I never saw the birds. And I ended up kind of leaving them. Shane Parker was hunting. That was when I was hunting Shane Parker open day of season. He was on the other side of the hauler. He was looking at him. It was eight long beards. It wasn't a Jake in the group. Oh and gosh. he's like, when they were fighting, they were all fighting, flogging each other. He's like, they never did like a good gobble. They were like hitting each other while they were gobbling. So it sounded weird. Yeah. And they were fighting, purring and clucking and just going crazy. Oh and so gosh. I was like, I'm like, it could be Jake's or it could be gobblers. Like what happened to me opening day doing the same thing. Like, I don't know. So we get spun around. He kind of moves up, ends up I, like, We've been sitting there now like twenty minutes on these like on these birds or this bird two birds whatever, and um, I'm like, I don't, why are they coming up here? Like they're not. It doesn't seem like they're moving. And then all of a sudden, I put slope. I'm like, we're on some steep stuff. I can tell we're on steep stuff like where we're sitting. But I put on slope angle shading on Onyx, and I'm like, oh, there's a bluff right here that I can't see. Mm. There was like a rock wall like right on that side. Yep, right between us and the birds. And I'm like, yeah, they're not gonna come up that. There's no way they'll have to come around the head of it or come or drop down that drainage to the the therm, big thermal hub and come up the point. And I told Thomas, I was like, hey, dude, let's just not, like, let's move. Like, we don't need to sit here. We need to drop off the backside of this point. We need to swing around the, the point itself down the creek bottom, and we need to set up looking back up that bottom. Like, we need to step around the edge of the point where we're calling up there, and if, if it's Jake's or Longbeard's, maybe Longbeard's five, maybe Longbeard and Jake, maybe it's three Jake's, I don't know. We're going to call from right there and see if we can draw them down to see what it is. Yep. So we do that drop off the backside of the point, opposite side of the drainage that those birds are on. And I'm like, hey, we can move kind of quick now. Like they're on that side, I ain't worried about. It. So we kind of, you know, kind of high tail it down the ridge, hit the creek bottom. So before across. we get to the creek bottom, mm-hmm. though, we oh. heard. Oh, before we moved, that's a good point. Yeah, like we're sitting there, and uh, no, we were we're standing Stay, up, standing, and I called or something, and he called or something happened to where down that drainage that these birds are in, it goes to that thermal hub that keeps running. Yeah, mm-hmm. like probably a mile or so. 
we hear a gobble down in that. A good gobble down in that drain. Like an actual, like, we didn't have to hesitate. We are like, that's a gobble. And I, I'm like, he's either down the bottom or he's up on the other side. And that's when it kind of clicked. I'm like, I wonder if that's this turkey we bumped because he flew right there in that direction. Yeah. And uh, so we drop off the ridge point, hit the creek, come around the creek, and it, those woods are, I'm talking, open river, open, not river bottom, creek bottom. Beautiful, big hardwoods, big oaks. And then a bunch of like stemmy, like uh, like uh, sweet gum saplings that are probably you know two inches diameter. They don't have leaves on them until they're like ten feet up, but it's like a bunch of that stuff and just mm-hmm. like no understory. But we get up to these big wide oaks. I'm like, hey, let's set up on these oaks and like call from right here. Like I would, it didn't make another sound while we were moving. And I'm like, let's sit on this giant oak tree and like we can shoot across this little like the the runoff little creek right here. If a bird's on that side, and if he comes around that edge of that ridge point out of that bottom. 35, 40 yards right there, 45 yards. And then this other bird comes off the ridge, we'll get them. Like, hopefully, like, we get some big trees around us and, like, get the sunlight. It's kind of at our back. It looks good. First call sequence. I kind of go against Coach Waters, what I've done with every other turkey. I'm like, it, we're down there with the creek and everything, the noise. I'm like, I'm going to get a little aggressive. I do a Yelp cut sequence. And I, did, I demoed this on the episode we did about me and my four turkeys. Uh, and this is what I use those every now and then located turkey and I'll just yelp it. It's probably like a 65, 70% volume, something like that. Like not as loud as I can gale, but do like a six note yelp and then pop, 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 pop on the back of it. Turkey on our side of the creek cuts me off. Yeah. And he's in the bottom mm-hmm. 140, 130, 140 yards away, 150 yards away. And he cuts me off and I'm like, that's it. Put the call down. And I'm like, Thomas, you need to move. Cause like he was on, he was facing where he can kind of shoot where these other birds were at, kind uh-huh. of up the drainage. And for him, he had another giant tree in front of him. I'm like, you need to move to this next tree. Like, get up and move quick. Like, move to that next tree. Yeah. He gets set on that next tree, and I'm just sitting there. I haven't said anything. And Thomas, what did you tell me? You're like... So, I kept trying to... So, we were still on the same tree. No, you move up, and you were trying to talk to me, and I had to lean up to hear you. I'm like, what are you saying? Why well, this turkey's coming? Yeah, so, he gobbles. I move, I mean, quick, and so there's... A big wa- water oak? No, they're all white oak. White oak and a small white oak right next to each other. And the bird, when he gobbled to your call, yeah. was right behind that giant white oak. Um, and I was like, the smaller tree to the right, I was like, if you see him, because he, he could see way past that big white oak. Yeah. So I was like, if you see him working right, let me know so I can... But we. Yeah. I was whispering, I guess. I, I couldn't, couldn't hear me. I'm like, just... Get ready to kill Terry. That's all I'll tell. I was like, get ready to kill Terry. I'll tell you if I see him. Okay. Yeah. So like, I lean back and I'm like leaned up against a tree, and we're like, when he says a small oak tree, the sm- small tree he's on is like that big. You know, it's twenty something inches diameter. The big oak tree in front of him is bigger than this, right? I mean, it's four feet across. Okay. And it's sitting like six yards in front of Thomas, ten yards in front of Thomas. Yeah. And all of a sudden, it do it? It has not been again five minutes since that bird cut me off, and I just see that was a minute easily. Seriously. I, I, okay. Again, yeah. Less than five like, minutes. It was quick. Between a minute and five minutes. <laughs> it was quick. And dude, all I just see this sucker. He just pops out. He's behind. He was behind this oak tree. He just like comes out. I say behind it. hundred something yards behind it. He comes out. He's probably maybe 80, 70, 80 yards, something like that. 60, 80 yards. He comes out full strut. And I'm like, Thomas, he's coming right to us. <laughs> he's directly behind the oak tree. Okay, and I see Thomas. I'm like, he's gonna come. He looks like he's walking left, left side of the oak tree. Get your gun, like ease it over that way. What was going through your head when? You, did you hear me when I told you I saw him? Oh yeah, <laughs> I heard you, and I was like, to be honest with you, I was so shocked because of like the percentage of the last two hunts and now this hunt. I was like, how is this happening? This is late morning. It's like ten. Like in my head, I was like. This is going to be the craziest three hunts or four hunts <clears throat> of deer and turkey, all my hunts combined. And when you said you saw him, I started, that's when I started getting a little shaky because this one I got really shaky because it was the longest we saw the birds. Well, not really, but longest working towards us. And More than the first one? Well, I didn't have a good because of that lighting. Yeah, that's true. See okay. But... This bird, I see him, he drops strut mm-hmm. when I saw him. Mm-hmm. And then he starts strutting again, working zigzag towards us. Yeah. And he's still at probably that that 70-yard mark. Yeah. And I was like, it's about to happen again. And after the last two birds, I was like, 
I had so much confidence in his gun. Like, with that, I told him, don't shoot that far. Like, dude, no, I I told him, like, 55 yards. Like, because if you like, because we bring a range finder, so like, I was pre ranging trees and stuff, so yeah, I have an idea of where everything was at, and like, I had him do it too. Uh But I'm like, we're not shooting at a turkey at 65, 70 yards, yeah, Yeah. but I wasn't saying I was gonna shoot then. I was like, I was like, it already in my head, I was like, this turkey's dead. Like, oh, that's a that's a dangerous thought, my man. Like, that's how that's how you start making mistakes. Well, it felt pretty good. Anyways, <laughs> he started working. He probably came another, you know, 15, he just kept 20 strut, yeah, yeah, he, he strut, was putting on a he'd show. He strut, drop strut, look around. And like, thank God, we, I mean, we are in a, he, it is the most picturesque bottom I've ever been in. Like sunlight's hitting, the sunlight's coming through the canopy, like off our right sh- or off my left shoulder. And it's like, he's like all lit up colored, white head, white with, you know, red wattles, a little blue in the back. Yeah. And dude, he's coming in and it's just, I'm like, of all the hunts, we should have filled this one. We sh- like, there was yeah. no way you could have moved and the, the camera. camera was sitting over here. Yeah. Yeah. But because <laughs> that light, when he was pop strut, like right before I shot him. Yeah. Like the sun was hitting his, his fan. And it like oh. lit it up. And it was like, Oh, that's that's pr- that's pretty. <laughs> but he he finally keeps working in. And all of a sudden, he like he cuts a little bit further to our left. He takes a right, but it's to our left. You know, he, he's he kind of walks a little bit. And then I didn't say anything, but like I was I was in my head. I'm like, you can kill him right there. Like he's covered enough distance. He's inside fifty. You can kill him right there. Yeah. And because I, I was like I was kind of worried. Like if he kept getting closer, I mean, you know, we're all camped up, and I'm like sitting against the oak tree. I'm like, dude, but when, when I. When he first got one, dude, I got low on that tree. Dude, I was like this. Like, all the people on the video, like, <laughs> just like my neck and shoulders just touching my, my vest. Like, I'm low. And uh, just trying to, like, blend into the ground and everything. And finally, Thomas just takes that shot. And as that turkey folds. Yeah. And I'm like, ain't no freaking way. <laughs> yeah. Freaking fourth hunt, really the third hunt. I mean, the, the one the day before we scouted, but we were we would have killed him if we had you know if we had an opportunity that morning. Yeah, I mean you had a gun, you were hunting. Yeah, you're hunting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, and that bird flops. I'm like, go get him, go get him. That's a, probably the, the phrase I said to Thomas the most. Go get, get him, go get, get him, him, eat him. I'm like step on his head, eat him, Tommy. Step on yeah. his head. And dude, he goes gets steps on his head and everything. And I'm like, I cannot believe that just happened, dude. God. And, Number three, baby. Yeah. And again. I just because of where he was at, where that bird that we spooked pitched dot, he pitched right to that area, like yeah, into that bottom onto that other hillside, and that's exactly where this bird came from. When we never heard another bird in that general area, those other birds we kept hearing in the drainage, they were still over to our right. We yeah. never saw them, whatever. But um, it's just insane. And he's got some pearly white spurs, got some real good spurs. Grab that one, Thomas. And we killed him at um, about ten fifty five. Yeah. So that was roughly hold it closer to you because it's focus. No, it's focus on your face. No, no. Closer to you. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So yeah. that was about three hours, a little over. Yeah, since we bumped them. Since we bumped them. And, and we, didn't co- we didn't cover a huge area. I mean, dude, we were in an area no bigger. Like, from the time that we bumped the turkey to the time we killed them, we might have walked maybe four or 500 yards, but it was like in an area that was, we went, we never got further than 250 yards of where we bumped that bird. Like, we just kind of like looped around in that one little spot for three hours. Yeah, just focusing on the area that you knew that they were already in. Well, I I gave Thomas an option. When we bumped the turkey, I'm like, we got two options here. We can either, like, go after this other bird that we heard gobble down below us, you know, and kind of stay in this area because maybe that bird gets fired back up, or we can just go to somewhere else. It's all up to you. And he was like, well, let's stay over here. I'm like, good decision. Because even if you said, let's go somewhere else, I'm like, I was going to veto that. (laughs) Veto! We're not leaving birds to go find more birds. Yeah. And uh, ended up paying off and just a uh, crazy cool hunt. Uh, and then. Well, so Thomas, I'm curious. Uh, now that you've got three birds under your belt, like what was the what was the motivation at that point? Like how motivated were you to get the fourth one and, and the, get tagged out? Was it like a different drive? Like, or yeah. were you just like, man, I just want to go turkey hunting again? No, it was it was both. Like I after I had three and before we shot the second, I was talking to Jake about this and like the percentage of people in Alabama, right, that can tag out is so slim. And like we said before, it took me a while to turkey hunt because of golf and work and all the other mm-hmm. stuff. Like I was trying to get Jay to go golfing with me. And it's like in golf, there's like only the top 5% ever break 80. So shooting in the 70s. So this is like one of those things that, and I, you know, you get fired up over that and you do that. It's like awesome. And you just want to keep going. Have you break 80? I have no have idea what 80? I have. Yeah. 
80 strokes. 80 strokes. Andrew's never played. Andrew's going to golf. Played golf. Anyways, some listeners I'll might to understand it, some might not. But anyways, like turkey hunting, this one of those things where, like like you said, once in a lifetime opportunity, like go chase it. And, you know, being a little competitive, I was like, dude, we got to go back. Yeah. We got to no, go I back. I told him, listen, we start hiking down. We had a long hike to the truck, long hike to the truck. And as we're leaving, because this is where it really solidified, because I, I think we were both thinking like, oh, yeah, we need, because that was Saturday, Sunday. By the way, his in-laws are in town. Mm-hmm. Came up from Houston. From Houston, Texas. Yeah. And they got uh, a bridal wedding shower or whatever going on Sunday afternoon. And we had church Sunday morning. And I, as I'm walking out, I'm like, we need it. Because like, I can't hunt past Sunday. I'm like, we we oh, if we if something- we need to try to go out again if we can, like for a couple hours. And what, what solidified yeah. that was when we were walking out with my bird, where I found those tracks that Friday, right? It rained, and when we were walking in, there, there were no, no turkey tracks. tracks. Yeah. And I was like, dude, I, watch. When we walk out, there's, if those bird, if those turkey tracks are back on that road, we got to come back and at least hunt that road mm-hmm. until like 8, 8.30. If they don't gobble. Yeah. If they don't gobble. And we walk back to that tee, and we start walking down, and as soon as we hit that tee back down to the truck, gobble track, hen track, gobbler track, hen track, all the way back down. And we looked at each other, and we are like, <laughs> we're coming back. We are coming back you, in the morning for this. You're breaking to the bird. fiance and, and the in laws, soon to be in laws. We come back up for a couple of hours. Yep. And then high telling it to church. Yep. So was, was Bella supportive? She was. <laughs> okay. There you go. We we were hanging out at the camper uh, Saturday night, and uh, we had a turkey fry. It was delicious, by the way. Oh yeah, it was dude. really good. We did turkey nuggets, but we were sitting there, and Jacob already left. He was going to bed, and it was probably like nine. 9.30. Mm-hmm. That's all we can sleep in. And Derek was like, which is my fiance's um, dad, was like, man, you got to get out of here. You got to wake up at 2.40 again and go turkey. And I was like, say less. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good in laws. Yeah. So I left. And then we we did sleep in because just like we, we haven't seen much people sign there, even though and it's later season. Mm-hmm. And getting out there doesn't take as long as you would think. Um so we got out there still probably at 4.20 is when we parked the cars um, and did the same thing where I parked down the, down the road on another access point and he's at the main gate. And we get up there, it's probably 5 o'clock, finally set up on, uh, and we set up a tree on the way out the, the night before the or before. the day before. Yeah. And we sit there and really... Five... Look, 5.45 comes real quick. I mean, we've been there for 45 minutes. Not a single gobble. Fly down is like 5.45. That's right. And, and um, no gobble. And I'm like, dude, what the heck's going on? And then like at 6 something, like 6.05, here, raspy hen. Definitely a hen. Not, I don't think it was Jake or Gobbler. But this hen gobbled right in front of us at the intersection. Of the that. hen gobbled? No, the oh, gobbler oh. gobbled first before the hen. Uh-uh. I remember I heard it. Maybe. I, don't, I didn't hear that time then. When I was like, gobble? Yeah, yeah, it was a gobble, maybe. But it, she starts yelping, not gobbling. That'd be crazy. I've never experienced that. This they, hen starts hammering. Hey, yeah. hey, hey, some people, you know, there's videos of, of hens gobbling. So, uh, but she starts yelping, and I'm like, God, I'm like, I wonder if it's that hen, and she's got the gobbler with her or whatever. So I start kind of calling back to her again, not subtle. Like, I'm not trying to do soft call, and I'm kind of doing that 50, 60% volume, kind of yelping back at her. And she's like, Kind of respond back and like cut a little bit. And I was kind of doing, kind of doing the same thing. And anyways, this turkey starts gobbling, and he's like way down this other holler, this big drainage system, and he starts gobbling. I'm like, okay, he's got a bird. I'm like, let's wait a second, let's see what happens. And I'm kind of calling back to her, and finally I end up stop calling, and she, she would yelp a little bit, and then that turkey would just hammer. Bop. But he, he was way down in this holler. And like we're up on top of this ridge, so it sounded like he was a lot further than where he was. He was probably 300, 350 yards, but it sounded like he was like, I mean, 800, 900 yards. So that grill faint, and they got a little bit louder, got a little bit louder, and you can tell he was coming up, she was going down. They met up, okay? You know, love story at that point. <laughs> yeah. So <clears throat> they get together, and I think he gobbled maybe one more time, and I was like, maybe they're coming up this ridge because we ended up trying to make a move, yeah. and then she starts yelping again, and she's not. But when we made a move, only went up like 40 yards or something, try to get on a different tree. And she yelps again. And she's still probably within like 100 yards of us. 
And uh, anyways, she ends up going down to the gobbler. They go quiet. And I'm like, crap. And I'm like, I was looking at the map. He gobbled one more time. And he, he got, he was facing away from us, going the opposite direction. And he's walking away up that drainage. And I'm like, dude, he's walking with that hen. And if they hit this little logging road, it's going to be way further down. Like, it's going to be way out through the woods and everything. And I started p- pull up the map. And I was looking at the map. And I was like, man, there's a big saddle further up, like down this ridge. There's like a big saddle that kind of comes up to another ridge. And that drainage kind of heads up at it. And I'm like, I almost guarantee he's going to come walking up to that saddle. So me and Thomas, I was like, dude, let's go. Let's like work our way down there. And he had already, you already walked up through that area before, right? Mm-hmm. On Friday. So Thomas was pretty familiar with the woods look like I, I was, I hadn't walked that direction yet. And we start walking down Larden road. And then this Thomas made a good call, made a real good call. Some woodsmanship. Mm-hmm. So this, this, uh, road bed, this old logging road is around the crest of this ridge and it's open pines, like open, open timber up there. And uh, with a little bit of understory. And he's like, dude, we need to get on the backside of this ridge. Because, like, where they're at between us and that drain, it's wide open. Like, you see 300 yards down in there. And I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, well, good call. Like, let's hop over. So we hop over off the logging road, get on the backside of our, our main ridge we're running down. We run it for maybe a couple hundred yards. And we get to where that logging road, like, bends. Like, bends a little bit towards, the, like, towards that saddle and towards, like, the drainage. And... I get there and I'm like, I don't feel comfortable going any further because that drain, like by the time we got there, they could have already been up in that saddle and the woods are real open. I'm like, if we come around this bend, we may be able to see all the way down there and yeah. they could bust us. So I'm like, let's sit right here in this bend and let's just stand here for a second. And I call from that set, that section, yelp, some cuts, not really much, but yelped, it yelped on a, on the, um, uh, on my, uh, houndstooth ceramic, that custom ceramic, on my box call and on my wing bone, all in a matter of like 20 minutes, like 15 minutes standing there. No responses to any of it. And I'm like, well, he's still here. I know he's still here. Like, we just need to stay right here. We don't need to go any further because I think we're going to bust him. And right where we were at, there was a, right in the bend of that logging road to our left-hand side, there's a small secondary point that came out and it created like a little saddle right there off our left shoulder where another drainage but that saddle came up across the road. There's another drainage on the backside of that saddle. It runs up this ridge and it comes right through this smaller saddle next to us. I'm like, I was just thinking in my head, I didn't even tell Thomas this, but I'm like, if I was a turkey walking through here, I'm coming through within 100 yards of this section. Yeah. No doubt. Just because of like all the, how the topography laid out, the vegetation, they're going to, like, if they come through here, they're going to come somewhere in this general area mm-hmm. where they walk up the logging road or walk up through that little saddle. And we, I was like, I told Thomas we were standing there for like 20 minutes. I'm like, I don't feel comfortable staying. We need to sit down. Mm -hmm. So let's hit a tree. We sat on a tree. And he was kind of facing kind of down the the little logging road. I was kind of facing off down towards that little saddle. And all of a sudden, that hen, the hen was the first one to talk, right? Yeah. She starts yelping. And she's like, I'm talking. This this hen had some attitude. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. And she's like, like just doing that and I'm like God dude and then all of a sudden bah, bah. I'm like he, he was a little bit further back she got close to us she came they came across but he's with her he's yeah. with her but he's a little bit behind her and they're coming up we're up that drainage right into that saddle they're right in that area I'm like oh dude they, they crossed it at the saddle right across the logging road yeah they came like, well, like we didn't see them but that's exactly what they yeah. did so I'm like Thomas you need to spin around this tree spin around this tree and uh because I'm like, we, at this point, we don't know if they're going to come up the ridge and like come up the side of the ridge and hit the logging road. They're going to come right through that saddle. I was betting on the saddle, that little saddle. Just I, it just looked good, like mm-hmm. a place a turkey would cross at. And then she goes back to yelping again, yeah, 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 yeah. And he's bah, bah. And I'm like, gosh, dude. So I start at this point. I'm like, I've tried to call in a little more aggressive towards his hen, and she went directly away, went towards the gobbler. We are dropping that crap. I'm like, I've already called in one hen for Thomas, and we killed that gobbler. I'm doing the same thing. I'm just going to call the hen. Like, Gobbler ain't going to split off, especially if she's this vocal. Yeah. So, like, I just need to try to get the hen to come in. So, we're sitting there. I'm doing some super soft clucks and purrs and super soft yelps. And the hen would kind of talk a little bit. All of a sudden, they got quiet. And Well, the gobbler, I think we heard, we thought there was two gobblers because he, like, yeah. we heard, like, purring and, like, a weird, like, gobbler or something. I'm like, I think yeah. there's another bird or something with him. And we're looking, and we can look out on that secondary ridge point, again, big open hardwoods. And... Thomas like, I see a turkey. And I'm like, where? He's like, it's out there on that ridge point. See that big big tree out there? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, it's next to that. I'm like, looking, looking, looking. All of a sudden, I see it. 
And he, I'm like, which way? I saw, I was like, which way did they come? And he's like, right to left. And I'm like, crap, like they're crossing a far distance. So I finally see the turkey, and I, decent sized bird. And I'm, I'm like, he's like, is it a gobbler? I'm like, I don't know. Is it a gobbler? And I thought I saw like sun was hitting, and I thought I saw like red on it, on his head, but I can't see a beard. Well, I start yelping to it. Like it's, it's crossing on that ridge point. So I start going, and then it stops and like starts going back the same direction it came from, dropping off that ridge point. So I start just soft yelping. Like, I say soft, like 20% volume yelp. Mm-hmm. And it stops, looks over at us. And it starts like walking right to us. And I just, as I was walking to us, I kept like clucking. And you don't know what it is? I can't tell what it yeah. is. I, at first, I thought it was a gobbler. Ends up being a hen. I start clucking and uh, and purring and then just soft yelping. And it's just coming, coming, coming. And finally, it gets to like, I had range before when they first gobbled. That first, that gobble, uh, the hen started yelping and the uh, gobbler. God, what I range across that little saddle. I'm like, hey, it's 80 yards across that. Like, you cannot shoot them. Even if they're in the ditch, you can't shoot them in the ditch. They got to be on our side of the ridge. Like, mm-hmm. we can't shoot that far. And um, she comes, and finally I see it's a hen. I see there's no beard. I see her head. I'm like, okay, it's definitely a hen. And she's coming right to it. She drops down, gets down close to that little bottom, and Thomas is like, I see, right? Yeah. What was it? Yeah, well, you tell your Like, when she popped out and started coming towards us at a diagonal, mm-hmm. I you were watching the hen because you're like I'll watch the hen. You'll keep looking behind her to see if that gobbler pops out. Yep. And almost exactly where I first saw him, we see the, first, where you first saw the hen. First saw the hen. Yep. That gobbler pops out in full strut. Yeah. Like looking like a tank. And like dude. where they're standing, it's that like foot, two foot vegetation, vegetation, green yeah. vegetation. So when he's in full strut and it's like this, it, these pines or and hardwoods, yeah. it's like. It's like life changing. You can see them, dude. It's, like, it's almost like they're levitating. Yeah. Because like all that greenery is around them, so like you don't see their legs. It looks like they're levitating. They're just, he's floating towards yeah. you. I mean, dude, and he can't, <laughs> dude, he went full strong. I'm like, dude, that's a big turkey. Oh, and he, just, was, dude, he was turning back and forth. Yeah, forward. he was spinning. So like when I saw that, the hen's still kind of like angling up towards us. She's coming off that little that ridge. I just started again soft yelping and clucking and purring, just super soft. Mm-hmm. And dude, he like. He would like come out of strut. He'd like stretch that head up, look in our direction. And while he's doing it, I'm still calling. Like we had decent cover. The best thing we had going was the sunlight at our back. And I'm like just super soft clucking and purring. And he'd go, go back and strut. And he'd just start shuffling back towards us. And the hen, finally the hen comes down the bottom. The gobbler ends up making a little bit of distance. And uh, at this point, I think Thomas, you were like, you were already talking about like being in an uncomfortable position because like you were all kind of like, yeah. Leaned over in a weird way, holding the gun up. Yeah, because I was set up looking down the logging road at first. So when we first saw the hen, I kind of just moved my my upper body, not my lower body as much. Mm-hmm. So I was having to hold the gun basically all with my left hand, my left arm. And I wasn't able to really rest on my knee. So that was probably... 10 minutes, 15 minutes maybe of holding it. And I was at the point to where like I was like shaking out of like tension, like uh, tension, yeah. like, like hold muscle yeah. fatigue. Yeah. Um, but he gobbles when he gets down into that little bottom. Yeah. He gets right next to that bottom, 80, 75, 80 yards. Yeah. He, he hammers and, uh, I was, and that was it made me even more shaky. Yeah. And at this point, the hen is probably it. She's already we, starting coming up. But we lost her. Yeah. Like she gets down that thick stuff in the bottom. I, I say thick. It looked thick from where we we're at. It really wasn't that bad, but we had a lot of visual obstruction. And she gets down there, she disappears. I'm like, I don't know where she's at, but I'm still calling. Like I'm soft clucking and purring and like super soft yelps. And she's like, she disappears. And then the gobbler. Now we're just like focused on the gobbler. The gobbler keeps coming, and then. At some point, he drops to the bottom. I lose the gobbler because I see the hen, and the hen's coming right to us. And I'm like, dude, the hen's getting close. I'm like, don't move. Like, there's some stuff in between us, some, like, brush, but, like, I can see her really well at, like, maybe 40 yards. And I'm just watching her, and I'm like, Get my, Thomas has my face mask because he lost his face mask, by the way. So I'm, like, hiding. I'm on the side of the tree. Thomas is on more, like, facing the turkeys. I'm on the side of the tree. I'm, like, hiding behind Thomas. Had the call in my hand, and I'm, like, just keeping my head behind Thomas's head. So I'm looking at the hen on his left side of his hat. I can't see the gobbler. And I'm like, at some point, I'm like, Thomas, do you see the gobbler? And you're like, no, I don't know where he's at. And uh, I see the hen. I'm like, the hen is right here, 30 yards, dude. Like, she's right here. And I'm like, I stopped calling. When she got that close, I stopped calling. I'm like, I don't need to call anymore. Yeah. And all of a sudden, she, she, I'm like, 
I Thomas looked like he was shaking because like probably from adrenaline, but also like being sore and just like muscle fatigue. And all of a sudden that hen darts like to the right. And I'm like, throws that head up and darts to the right. I'm like, crap, she sees us. I'm like, where's the gobbler? He's like, I don't see her. I don't see him. And I look behind where the hen was at and he's in full strut right there behind her at like 35 yards. Oh yeah. yeah. And I'm like, like he came up and like bumped her, like, Drops. Like how a buck does. Yeah, just like yeah. a buck does and bumped her. And he's like, she's like, I don't want nothing to do with you. And she went to the right, which is good because mm-hmm. she was coming. She was crossing next yeah. to an oak tree. Yep. She came up. She was still angling up to us, but crossing. Past an oak tree, and it's wide open next to this little oak tree. Or more open than everything else. And he's like full strut. And he's I can hear him spitting drum now. I can hear him drum real good when he's at that spot. <laughs> and he, he, yeah, so when he's right through, the hen's already out of my visual yeah. at this point because it kind of rolls off. And there's that, you know, that brush in between us and him. We could see him perfectly fine, but there's so much stuff we couldn't, I couldn't shoot. Yeah, way too much And stuff. he's full strut walking parallel that, that little b- ridge mm-hmm. going straight to her. And like there was one gap. Left to right in front of us. Left to right in front of us. And then right after, like right before he gets out of most of that brush, he drops like, he's in like half strut and mm-hmm. kind of picks his head up. Oh, I told you, don't shoot him in full strut. Yeah. That's like the bird out. Cause like, I'm like, I will cluck. I'll do something to get him out of full strut. Just cause I want you to have that neck up where you can like, you've got a lot to hit instead of his neck yeah. all compact. So he was in half strut. And the reason why I didn't wait really much longer is cause there was one white oak that he was about to go in front of. Like, I mean, not right in front, but like probably two or three yards. And once that hen crossed that, I lost her. Okay. So I yeah. was like, as soon as like I have a decent shot before that white oak, I'm shooting. Well, mm-hmm. I think I told you like shoot him, yeah, shoot him because I was worried he's gonna get behind that white oak and drop away from us or like do something weird because I didn't know if the elevation dropped because like like yeah, when the hen crossed right there, I lost the yeah, hen too. Lost her. Yeah, and dude, she, he comes out and I just tell Thomas I'm like kill him and he just um, just put him down. T- this turkey didn't even flop, dude. So you tag out. Yep. What's your reaction? So you shot it. Birds flopping. Like, how, how's it feel? Well, if we if we could add that photo, I mean, that video, after I go pick them up and come back, I was fired up. <laughs> I was, like, heart racing. Mm-hmm. Like, honestly, like, one of the best feelings I've had hunting. Like, and that's, like, serious. For like, everything. For everything. Like, one of the best. Like, there's really, like, I've shot some decent bucks. Like, if I probably have shot, like, a 140, 150, I'd probably be, like, uh, you know, like not, eh, but like, <laughs> it like, mean a lot. Yeah, it mean a lot. But yeah, like between deer, turkey, you know, that bear. The bear was actually, I'd probably put the like if I could the turkey season as a whole goes over the bear. But if just bear versus one turkey, probably bear. Yeah, but dude, I was excited, dude. That you went zero to a hundred real quick. I'll tell yeah. you that. So what? What's your outlook as a as a point of wrapping up? Because all these cameras are about to die. Yep. Uh. What what is your takeaway from like this year going into next turkey season? Like you already looking? Are you going to be playing golf next no, turkey season? Probably not. <laughs> I'll probably be in the woods I'll, a month before. He's saying probably. Yeah, We're not I getting a definitive I answer. Uh, if Andrew tells me probably, just understand. Wait, what no. else? You said you, you said, said pro- I'll probably, probably probably. Oh no, probably. That, I will. That means no, I will be in the woods. Oh, okay, next year. All right. Well, you said but, it here. We're going to hold you accountable. Yeah, we'll play this back next year. Yeah, we'll play it back. Let's but, see what uh, we're. At. Looking like what I've, so having the success I've had with Jacob this year and being by Jacob while we are hunting Mm -hmm. and having that success, Mm -hmm. I know now what you have to do to, you know, kill a bird. Yeah. Now, if we would have went out every time and we never, I never (laughs) shot a bird, I'd be like, well, I'm not doing that. But like having Mm -hmm. this view on like the calling, where you need to go set up on you know just being there with them even though you're not there like hearing them yeah man key. you got like years worth of experience in a in week a, and a half yeah like on public land like you got to watch four public land mature long beards yep. die yeah like you got to kill four of them which is real i mean dude in alabama that's that's really 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 good yeah. and i told jacob when he texted me when y'all had killed the last one I I texted him back. I was like, dude, you better soak it in. Yeah. Because like, you know, even even the best guys that we interview, whether it's mm-hmm. coach, 
whether it's Wayne, whether it's Mike Pentecost, any of those guys, they have years like this, and then they have years like, you know, my year last year, mm-hmm. where you know I only killed one, or some years I don't kill any. Yeah. You know, and and those are like you just like you you gotta enjoy it when it's here because it's not always like that. Yeah. And you know, meanwhile, when y'all are doing, you know, y'all are having a really good hunt, and we were hunting with Sam and Blakely, and mm-hmm. we did not have a good hunt as far as like hearing birds and everything goes. And uh, that's that's what I was telling them. I'm like, it can turn around real quick. I'm like, where we're at, they're just not really doing it right now. We can't make them gobble. We can't make them come in. Where they're at, they're playing the game. And, you know, if like a turkey, if he doesn't want to come in, he ain't going to come in. There's nothing you can do about it. You know, but when you when you get it, you strike while the iron's hot. And y'all, y'all struck when the iron was hot, dude. Yeah. Unbelievable two weeks of turkey hunting. Yeah, late season. So I, I calculated it. it was two and a half weeks between me and Thomas, it was, or actually me, Thomas, and you, it was nine birds killed in two and a half weeks. Yeah. Me and Thomas, it was eight birds killed in two and a half weeks. So 10 birds killed between the three of us this yeah. year. That's awesome, dude. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Legend. Good, great year, man. Legendary yeah. year for us. Yeah. It's crazy, dude. So, um, yeah. And, and I'll, I'll say this just as a, a kind of point of wrapping up. There's a lot of lessons learned. I think when you can go hunt with somebody, because like this is the first year it really clicked. Like I killed two birds last year, but. I always felt like there was always some small things I was messing up in order not to kill birds I would get on. Yeah. And it's like this year, and also I think it was part of the time of the season, a lot of people stopped hunting. And like late season, it was like turkeys gobbled fairly decent. There were some days they didn't gobble very good. You know, two or three days you wouldn't hear anything, but then all of a sudden it it would turn on. But it kind of goes back to having time to hunt because like I don't know how many guys could go out and hunt like on a a Wednesday and stuff like that and, you Mm -hmm. know, go out different times, you know, different times of the week. But um, it, it, there was a, a lot of really good lessons learned. I mean, it kind of goes back to, like, Coach Waters, covert calling. To me, I'd rather do that, try to call the hen in, than try mm-hmm. to be aggressive with her. Mm-hmm. Uh, just because, like, I haven't had – I don't think, looking back, I've never had success calling aggressively at a hen to get a hen to come in. Yeah. But it's like this year I've called in two hens and get, get them to come in just by that super soft call and acting like a content hen. She's like – and I think – me and Tom talked about I think she was coming over to us to try to get that gobbler yeah. off her back. Yeah. Oh, she didn't yeah. want nothing to do with that gobbler, it seemed no. like. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, that's awesome, dude. Congratulations, boys. It's a, it's a good season, man. Um, we're going to uh, – we're pushing back the uh, the contest for reviews one week because we're recording this like right after the other episode dropped. Uh, so this next Thursday, we're going to be uh, declaring a winner that's – Apple Podcasts, we're doing a review, like I guess competition over there. Uh, we're going to read uh, the reviews next Thursday. And our favorite one, we're going to pick and send you a Blaze Orange Southern Outdoorsman hat and a sticker. So y'all be sure to uh, go leave some reviews on Apple Podcasts for that. And uh, other than that, we'll see everybody at the Eco Wild Expo in Mobile this weekend. Uh, it's Friday through Sunday. We're going to be there. We're going to have a booth. On Sunday, we're going to be doing a live podcast and Q&A at 1 o'clock, 1 to 3. So that's going to be really fun. Make sure you stop by for that. We're going to have merchandise for sale, and uh, we're just going to be hanging out. It's going to be a really good time. So looking forward to that. We'll see all you guys in Mobile. And, uh, Jacob, you got anything else? Nope. Just appreciate everybody watching the podcast. Appreciate everybody listening to the podcast. Hopefully you've learned something from the podcast that either you applied this year and had success with or you know what you're going to be doing for next year. So uh, other than that, y'all have a great rest of your week. Look forward to seeing you guys in Mobile at the Eco Wild Expo. And... Thank y'all for watching. Thank y'all for listening. And remember, guys, y'all stay Southern.